Hello. Okay. Here I am. Hold on. I be honest. I need to figure I need to actually see if Yoko's ready. But my method of doing this involves the audio and my audio channels are it's just all off my desktop, so I might have to mute the music for a second. So it's just gonna be me chatting while I try to sort this out or try to see if we're ready to go. Uh, so let's see. I hope you might be able to hear my, my keyboard clicking away too as I send messages. Okay, so, she's, uh, replying. Oh. Okay. Okay, I see. So, <laughs> I was mistaken on Twitter. I mentioned that she, I thought she would be streaming it also, but apparently not. So, that's okay. So, I, she's trying to wrap up her stream, I think. So, we'll just chat for a bit. I don't, you know. <laughs> so, okay. Well, anyway, how are you all? So, today we're going to be doing a little bit of math, I think. And, uh... I mean, I love math. I mean, I talk about it all the time. So, yeah, okay, I, this is difficult. I'm, like, trying to listen. Cause, so she's live right now, finishing up her stream, and I'm, like, trying to... And I just am trying to listen to what she's saying, because she's saying, oh, she's going to wrap up her stream and come over here. So, um... But yeah, anyway, I guess I'll just turn that down. And uh, I will be uh, we'll be going over math problems. So, I mean, I'll explain this more once she gets here, I guess. But I think she's also talking about it a little bit, to be honest. Um, but yeah, how's everyone doing? Hope you're having a good day. It's, uh, you know, nice Friday for me. And... Um, yeah, so we're, uh, we're, uh, <laughs> I'm like getting so distracted. I'm like trying to listen and talk at the same time. Um, I suspect in a moment, a lot of her viewers will be come, showing up over here, but I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I, uh. As I've mentioned, I you know I love math. I I always talk about it whenever I'm streaming, right? Whenever math comes up in any capacity, I'm always just rambling about it forever, to the to you know maybe the detriment of the conversation in, in the chat because <laughs> it kind of uh, I kind of lose track of anything else that's happening. But uh, yeah, I mean, so I've you know studied a lot of math, so this is something I enjoy talking about whenever possible. So I'm excited for this. I hope that I can, that there's, there's some people who are interested in hearing about more math, because I would love to talk about it more. It's just kind of hard to find an audience, I feel like, especially because, you know, most people who are coming to streams and stuff aren't, aren't really looking to hear about math, necessarily. It's not exactly a popular topic, as much as I love it. Um, oh, boy. My desk space could get, hmm. I need to think about how I'm going to arrange my desk here. So, um, yeah, I mean, well, in the meantime, I'm trying to think if there's something I can do while I'm waiting. It's, uh, <laughs> ostensibly, she'll be showing up soon, she'll be wrapping up soon and coming over in a few minutes, but, uh, Ryoko definitely, uh, has a tendency to get engaged in conversation, 
So, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I can't be certain exactly how long it'll take, which, I mean, I'm not in any particular rush or anything, so it's not a big deal to me. I just feel like maybe I should be filling the time with something. I'm just kind of rambling here. Um, what, what could I pull up? I'm trying to think if there's a game or something I could fill the time with. It'd have to be something short, but I don't know what that would be. I mean, I don't really want to, I don't necessarily want to rush her. Well, maybe I'll also make a, I'll note on Twitter that she's not actually going to be live. So maybe I'll comment on that. Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm just gonna write, I'm gonna send a tweet out to, to update this information that I was mistaken on. All right, um, I mean, let me pull up Steam while I'm waiting. I might have to, so I mean, okay. Well, I, I mean, we can, just, we can just talk about whatever. I'm, uh, I wish I had a game that I could fill this time with. I mean, there's definitely some games I probably could, but man, I just, every time I pull open Steam, I see the Wild Frost demo, which is not playable because it's not available right now, but man, I just want Wild Frost. I like, keep waiting for an update. Obviously, I am fine with them taking the time that they're taking, but it's, uh, kind of, ex it's kind of a something I'm, I want to, I just want to play it. I want to stream it. I want to play it on my own. And uh, it's coming. Pres presumably, it's supposed to be coming in the next couple months or so, right? Because the they mentioned that it would be uh, winter, which it is, you know, currently winter until March. <laughs> so just over two months left of winter. Um. Anyway, how is everybody? Having a good day? Normally, this is the point where I would have already started playing whatever game I was playing. I don't mind small talk or whatever, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit difficult uh, when, well, when chat is quiet, <laughs> and, it's, and I don't. I mean, I could just try to talk about random stuff. So maybe I'll pull up the problems or something, and I can start. I kind of had to review them before. They, they're not really that difficult or anything, but I did have to, like, look over them to make sure I remember the answers. And there were a couple. There were a couple on there, which, to be honest, the answer is not that complicated. But actually being sure that the answer I came up with is valid was a little bit tricky. And I, the thing is, it's kind of funny because that stuff is probably not really that important. Right? For the purposes of doing, like, a problem sheet, it doesn't especially for something like this where it's very casual, there's no need to actually prove that. Well, okay, I, let me phrase this correctly because obviously you don't want to be writing problems where the solution actually doesn't, isn't valid um, for whatever reason, right? A lot of it having to do with deeper properties of math, which I'm not, I don't really anticipate going into, but there's, at the same time, it's like, as long as I kind of know that it, it does work properly. There's no reason to worry about, you don't need to prove that for like this kind of problem where I'm just looking for the answer. I mean, we'll see it. Maybe we'll see it when we get to it. But in essence, what it comes down to is there's like, you know, certain properties of limits and things like that. And well, things like infinite sums and in products and how they interact, which because of the nature of I mean, anything infinite, realistically, because of the nature of that, it can get a little bit out of hand, and there's certain things that may seem obvious intuitively, but actually are, well, A, potentially not even true, or B, not so easy to be clear, to be certain that it is true. Um, so, you know, I kind of felt like I had to check some of that stuff, and, 
and I did, and I'm pretty sure it's good. <laughs> it should be okay. Um, it's been a while since I had to, to go had to dig into this kind of stuff. Like, despite having studied math for my whole life, I you know I haven't worked in math uh, explicitly for a little bit. It's been a while since I was like working very heavily in like actual math research. So it's been a while since I was actually being really careful about this kind of stuff. Um, but I think it's, I think it's okay. I mean, I did so much of it. I should, I think I was able to track down the information. It's not what, like it was anything that complicated. It was honestly pretty, uh, natural stuff that I was working on, but it's just like, sometimes you feel like, sometimes I get worried. It's, it's kind of a funny situation when I'm talking about math in like an online space or especially in particular as like when I'm streaming, right? Because I... Compared to, like, a, the average person, um, you know, just a random person, I've studied a lot of math, and my, like, math level is probably quite high. But, of course, as with anything, compared to the people who I was surrounded by when I was actually studying math, I definitely didn't feel that way, right? Like, I, <laughs> it's, the, it's all the same kind of stuff that leads into, like, where there's always people who are better than you, obviously, at anything you do. Um, but, like, you know, when you're in math grad school and stuff, there's so many people who are just so good at it. And I'm just like, I mean, I could kind of make sense of this, but it's like, they're just like, there's a lot of people who are really good at it. And I mean, this isn't to discredit, like, obviously those people also put in a lot of work and are like working very hard to understand these things. But the point being, it's very, it, <laughs> I always get worried because of this, that I'm going to say something that doesn't actually quite add up properly the way it, that, or like I'm going to phrase something that's not in a way that's not quite correct and get corrected on it. Not that I have a problem with being corrected. I'm fine with being corrected, but I just am worried that I'm going to say something <clears throat> and it's not going to be correct. And like, it's going to cause a problem or something or like, but the truth is that's not going to come up, right? Like obviously in like kind of a stream environment, there's no reason that anyone would have a problem with me making a mistake a or b there's also just who knows how often anyone would even notice that i've made a mistake so it realistically is not something i should worry about and i don't really like stress about it but, but i always think about that when i'm like trying to do okay because the funny thing also with with math is when you study math people always have this conception about what math is and that's not to say that it's entirely incorrect but like a lot of people, because of what they understand about math, having grown up studying math, you know, or like the math that they learned as a child or in high school and such, it's, a, it's to be honest, it's like pretty different from studying higher level math, the kind of math you see there. So people like expect me able to do like rapid, like long multiplication or something just out, just multiplying big numbers out together and getting the result quickly and I'm like that's I mean I just use a calculator <laughs> that's if I need to multiply long numbers I pull up Wolfram Alpha and say hey Wolfram Alpha what's the what is this I don't really do it by hand or anything or like so you know when you make a mistake on when you add something incorrectly or you multiply something incorrectly people are like well don't, don't you study math I'm like yeah I did that in my head and it was wrong that's how you know I study math <laughs> I mean okay Having said that, that's not that's a little bit misleading because uh, the fact is I do probably I am still probably even with arithmetic. When you study math, you do you ex encounter that kind of stuff so much that you do kind of pick up a lot. You like you get to a point where you do probably have a more of a handle on it than the average person. So I do probably do math like computations faster and, and like with uh, more accuracy than just a someone who, who doesn't study math would. But, you know, if I compare myself to someone who does that specifically because they like to, even if they didn't study math, they would, like, they would be better at it. <laughs> but I guess that's, that's true of anything, right? Someone who does something because they like it and has put in a lot of time, they're going to be good at whatever it is, math or anything, really. Um, so, Okay. I'm going to, I mean, I could always, <laughs> I'm trying to decide. The thing is, I'm like, I could pull up, I could start doing a run in like Dicey Dungeons or Slay the Spire or something. Um, 
just to have in the background while I'm rambling here. Because I feel like I'm just kind of rambling here and doing nothing. Um, but I don't know if I, how far I would get, you know? Because I would have to just cut it off at any point, which is fine from a gameplay perspective. I don't really care about that. But from a stream perspective, it'll be very lacking in resolution. <laughs> it'll be quite the cliffhanger that will never be resolved. But like I was, the reason I brought up this brings me back to why I brought up Wild Frost earlier because I was like, well, if Wild Frost is out, I probably would just pull it up, even though I wasn't planning to finish the run, just to be like, well, this is what I'm gonna do while I'm waiting because this is the thing I want to do regardless. Man, there's some other games coming out that I also am interested in, but I don't. I mean, so I was thinking about um, SpongeBob SquarePants: The Cosmic Shake, which is coming out. I so I never played Battle for Bikini Bottom, which obviously they, it got re remade or remastered and released and that sort of was part of the surge that led to the cosmic shake being made um and i never actually played that i remember the only spongebob game i played as a growing up was uh the spongebob squarepants movie game and it was like you know it was fine it was an okay game it was the standard you know nick game and then i also had fairly odd parents like the the shadow what was it shadow showdown or something i think it was called i just looked it up recently because i couldn't remember the title but it's it's kind of funny how those games are like nostalgic for me. They're not, I don't even think they're like, they weren't that great or anything. It really gets, it really is funny to me to think about the kinds of games you play as a kid and how like you can feel nostalgic and you, at the time you're just like, that was the game you had. So you played them and they were fun, but you didn't really, and you didn't really think about it that much beyond that. Um, but, uh, you know, nowadays, I don't know that I would, if I started playing it, I'd probably just be like, uh, this is okay, and then I would just move on. I wouldn't, like, force myself to keep playing it or anything if I wasn't enjoying it. But, and, and that makes it sound like I didn't enjoy it when I was a kid. I just forced myself to keep playing it, but I didn't, right? Like, at the time, I did enjoy it, and it was fun, and I just kept, and I wanted to keep playing it. So I don't know. It's, like, hard to know how I would feel about those kinds of games now. I mean, Cosmic Shake looks interesting. I, I don't, it, does, it looks pretty similar to a lot of the other, that kind of game, so who knows... I don't know, but I'm tempted. I think I'll give it a try, and we'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully, you know they've modernized the style of gameplay a little bit because there were definitely some elements of those kinds of game of those games back in the day that were kind of weird and old. But I don't know. I can't remember it that deeply. There was another SpongeBob game actually I played as a kid. It was not a console game. I had it on PC. It was like, it was like a point and click I think and you like moved or it was like a point and click game where you went around and all I remember is so there was a restaurant called sublime seafood and their slogan was taste like chicken and like you go there and I think you go to a bunch of places I think you go to like rock bottom at one point but I just remember that that sublime seafood has stuck in my head forever and it's like not a thing it's like in my brain it's such a spongebob thing but it's, a, it's not in the show or anything it was made for that game and it's, it's so funny that it's like a Spongebob memory in my brain, which is not associated with Spongebob. It doesn't even, it's not a thing most Spongebob, like people, when they think of Spongebob, will ever think of, because it's not a thing most people will have encountered. But, uh, yeah, so it makes me wonder, like, there's probably, it's, it's, there's like other memories in my brain also that are, I think are like SpongeBob or something, but I can't even, I don't even know. I just like have like clips in my brain where, I, and I can't even think of what they are at the, like on the spot. But like when something happens, I'll go, it'll make me think of a different line, which in my brain I associate with SpongeBob, but I have no idea what it's, where it comes from. And I've like tried to look them up occasionally and I, I can never figure it out. Like voice lines, I'm just like, and I'm like, I, I swear that that someone says that in some episode, but I, I don't know where. And I must, and I, Presumably so, because the thing about about SpongeBob is I think like all the transcripts are like available online. If you just Google them, you can find like the transcripts for every episode, more or less. So I guess I must be butchering these lines that are in my head because they are I don't find the transcripts when I Google the line. So I must be making a mistake on it, or it's just not a high enough result to be showing up. Which I guess is certainly possible as well. Um Okay, so Um, so, yeah, I, I, the other thing is, so, okay, because, so, Battle for Bikini Bottom, I mean, I had the SpongeBob SquarePants game, and I, Battle for Bikini Bottom was supposedly, like, a better game, but 
I think. I don't really know. I never played it, but I, I, I haven't played. I should play the rehydrated version, I guess, but I just, like, don't really have that much interest in doing so, because, but then it's, like, I don't think it's actually directly related. It's just, like, spiritual sequel is Cosmic Shake. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. Hold on. Let me check again to see. <laughs> Still waiting on Dilco. Okay, well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I keep. I guess I'll just keep rambling for the time being. Um, what was I talking about? So, okay, and then there's... I was trying to remember, like, there's the Fairly Odd Parents game that is Shadow Showdown. I don't even... I, I don't even know if there were other games. I think there were, but it's just... I remember playing these games. They were, like, all GameCube games, at least the ones that I was playing. And it's just kind of funny, because they, like, all have... They all kind of look not even that good. Like, they have the weird... Okay, I mean, I'm not even someone... I actually think cell shading can look really good, right? Like, Wind Waker did a good job with it. And there's plenty of games that do good, do a good job with cell shading and make it look really nice. And it's got a, a good style to it. But man, those old Nick games have some wonky cell shading where, like... And it's not even the cell shading, actually. That's not even the issue. They are cell shaded, but that's not necessarily the issue. They're, like, trying to emulate, though, like, the cartoon vibe, I guess. Which is the point. But the issue is more just that, like, a lot of the games... A lot of the things don't translate well to 3D... I mean, we've seen this, right? Like, if you see, if you've seen like the Fairly Odd Parents 3D episodes, and there's like a movie where they have a 3D segment and stuff, like Timmy Turner does not make sense in 3D, right? <laughs> like, like his his uh, the way he looks makes the most sense in 2D because there's a lot of weird place. You can put things in weird places and still have it make sense when you're just looking at it like in a 2D plane. But when you look at it in 3D, you like you can't place the things physically in a way where it looks like it makes sense from more than one angle, right? You have to do weird tricks. So, so because of that, like, those games, because they're all 3D modeled and it, like, and rendered, it, like, looks kind of goofy. And also, they all, I remember there's always, like, the weird issues with, like, clipping and stuff. Like, the models, like, always, like, clip into themselves or do weird things. But, you know, that's just... I mean, that could happen to, like, a lot of different games. Like, a lot of... That happens all the time in, in lots of situations, I guess. But... You know, it is what it is. But now, I mean, so, like, 3D animation is very interesting because, like, you kind of have to... It has to be a different style. If you want to emulate, like, the 2D style... I've seen... There are, like, some anime that have done that, right? Where they emulate 3D animation... Or, uh, sorry, emulate 2D... Simulate or, like, kind of imitate 2D animation with 3D by, like, having weird things and just by carefully controlling the shots and the position, like, the camera angles, they're able to, like, adjust or, like, control how it looks... So, like, at other angles, it looks weird, but because it's just animation sequences, it doesn't matter because you're only looking at the angle that they're controlling. So the problem is with games, of course, you can move things around. So they would have to... Well, at least... I, that's not necessarily true. You could make a game where the camera is controlled, and that then you can get away with some of those same tricks. I, that's... I mean, for example, that's how some of the games... Like, some fighting games do things like that. Like, Guilty Gear is 3D. Like, the, the models, I think, are 3D, but they are, are done in a way where it looks like 2D animation... I think. I can't remember exactly if that's the case. I think that's the case. Um, but yeah, you can get, you know, as long as you can control the camera angles, you can you can be a little bit uh, more, you know, wonky with it, because th things will, as long as you're controlling the angles. But with free camera controls, you kind of just have to either do weird tricks where it changes as you're moving the camera, or you have to just accept that it's going to be wonky looking. And, uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it makes me curious though, cause I have seen more like 3d anime in like recent years that kind of look okay. I mean, I think they're trying to push towards making things okay. And of course, a lot of animation studios just do 3d now, right? Like Disney for a long time was a 2d studio animation studio, and they've since become basically entirely 3d, right? Like princess and the frog was the last 2d animated ha movie like, feature film, um, and I think it's mostly for, because of time and effort required, right, like, the 2D animation takes, is a lot of work, especially if you are making, like, a full feature-length film, um, 
But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to see where those kinds of things go. Gotten pretty sidetracked on this conversation. I don't even remember where I started. Uh, I keep I keep looking at my game library and thinking I should I should start a game, but every time I'm just like, oh well, that's probably I probably don't I don't really have that much time. But uh, who knows? I mean, it's been half an hour now, and uh, oh. Okay, it looks like she's wrapping up. So, I guess... I guess uh, we'll be good. I, I, I think it looks like she's wrapping up, so hopefully we'll be uh, here soon. I may have to... So, okay, I'm going to have to figure out the audio once I have a moment. Because uh, I currently have my desktop audio muted. And that's where I think all of any voice will come through as well. So I'll have to look, I don't know, maybe see how it goes. But, uh, I mean, other than, so I guess we'll, I was, oh, I remember how I got to this topic. Because I was thinking about games that I'm looking forward to. So the other game that's like, oh man, I was like, recently I was just looking through a bunch of games just to see if there's anything interesting coming up. Especially like I was looking at, some of the upcoming indie games and stuff. And I mean, there's like a lot that's coming that I'm interested for, but a lot of it does not have set release dates, so it's not clear exactly when it'll be coming. Um, but I'm excited for them when they do show up. And there's a lot of games that... See, okay. I There's all, also a lot of games that look fun. Oh, hey, Yoko. How are you? Thanks for the raid. I mean, I guess it makes, <laughs> it makes sense. I'm not... I, I'll admit... This is not exactly a surprise that you're raiding me, considering that you're about to show up in the stream very shortly. So, hello everyone. How are you? How are you today? I've just been rambling about various topics uh, as we wait. So, I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's having a good day. Or good morning or afternoon, what have you. But yeah, thanks for uh, stopping in. I mean, if you're coming here from Ryoko's stream, you'll. If you want to hear more from Ryoko, you will soon, presumably. <laughs> I'll be, I think I'll, we'll be hearing her voice on stream shortly. What are you talking about? So I was just rambling. I mean, okay, I started on talking about math, and then I was talking about games that I'm looking forward to, and then I was rambling about those old Nickelodeon games. Okay, because this the topic was I was talking about like the new SpongeBob game that's coming out at the end of the month. And so then I was like, oh, I, you know, it got me on the topic of the old uh, games and, and playing them. And then I was talking about like three, like converting 2D shows into 3D. <laughs> A little late, but here I am. Yep, here you are. All right. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me join this voice call. Hello? <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Hold on. Wait. Wait. Hold on, let me turn. I have you muted on the stream. Let me turn you on. Fine. Okay, you're you're on. You're 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 unmuted. I'm unmuted. All right. Hi, hi, Minasa. Well, I didn't say Minasa on my other stream, but hi. Thank you. Um, those who are <laughs> popping in over here from my other stream. We're just kind of rolling right over to Camelia's yep, yep. stream. Okay. Let me. Do you have the? Uh, <laughs> hold on. Let me first open something so I can have. Do Do we have? Do, do I have what? <laughs> Let me get my thing open. I know what you want from me. Yeah, yeah. I just have, I've just like been through a lot, and I'm trying to. I'm, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. That's though. fine. Just, it, just send me, yeah, the the just like whatever, because I'm just gonna put it on my stream, um, just so yes. I can have it up. Okay. Yes. Let me get that. But hi, hi. Thank you, those who are uh, popped over on the stream. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Dylan says a bro. I want to play, play FF16. Yeah. Oh, was that the new one? I. I don't Maybe know that much about Final Fantasy. I know the Mega Man Battle Network collection is coming out. I uh, I didn't really play. My cousins played a lot of Mega Man Battle Network back in the day. I think they're probably really excited for that. But I never really played that much, so so I don't I don't have that strong feelings about it. You used to have a cute veiled chameleon. Whenever she looked at you with both eyes, it was super adorable for some reason. That's really cute. Chameleons are very cute. <laughs> Aww. I mean, I guess you you know you're kind of hitting upon the theming I have for myself here. 
Yeah, FF16 is the new one coming out. Okay, hold on, let me get this window up also so that... I mean, I don't have, obviously, your model, but I at least have a PNG of you on screen. Yeah, when that's I good. Switch that's it good. over. There's actually a way to like green screen me on there, but I think uh, we'll save that for next time. Okay, yeah, sure. A lot to go yeah, through. we'll we'll right we'll now. have to set it up in advance next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my friend um over he does that where he has a. Oh, by the way, I'll send you the image on Discord okay. with my Sounds um good. Oh, math shoot, problems, that's... and I'll see if I can get a better image of it. I may have saved it. Okay. Somewhere else. But anyways, we'll get to that. Uh, let me adjust this. This is not really how mm. I realized now that I have the rulers on. Whoops, not that one. Hey, I'm in the corner. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, just... what's happening? <laughs> just adjust this a little bit. Oh, so uh, FF7 Remake Part 2 Rebirth. Yo, I actually have to play um, Part 2... No, 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 no. Uh, FF7 remake with my partner. Like he, we were, we, uh, he played through a little bit of it, and I was watching him play it. And he's like, "Hey, Ryoko, I'm gonna play somewhere. You wanna watch?" And I was kind of like, "I have something else to do." And we never got to finish the game. And I was, I gotta get back on that with him. <laughs> FF7 looked really good. The remake. Yeah. Hi, Shane, <laughs> thanks for popping in. Good night. Yeah, the FF7 remake does look interesting. I've oh, also wait, never day, played I that. Think... Oh yeah. <clears throat> FF7 Remake? Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> it was good. It looked really good. I played a little bit of it. <clears throat> yeah, I <laughs> I never played Final Fantasy because, like, well, because... What? <laughs> I know, that sounds crazy, what? right? <laughs> it's So the, the reason is because, and this happens with a lot of different game series that I haven't played, which is a lot of the big series that, like, what it comes down to is growing up, I only had Nintendo consoles, and I didn't really have a PC until I was in college. So, like, anything oh. that wasn't on a Nintendo console before, you know, those t until before I got a PC, I have not played. Which, obviously, so Final Fantasy was, mm. was you know, mostly PlayStation, right? <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I just never really played it. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's... Yeah, uh... I also played a lot of uh, Nintendo. I had, like, a Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. um, N64... I may have skipped GameCube, but I did get it at some point. Mm -hmm. Also, Wii and Wii U and all that. I had a I had a PlayStation One. I had a PlayStation Two. I had I skipped PS3 and PS4 until my and until I started dating my partner, and then he uh, <laughs> he also had a PS4, so I started I playing those games. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the game uh, Xbox. Yeah. There were some games on Nintendo, but they're less <laughs> known than playstation yeah that makes sense i could believe that they remade ff3 and ff4 on the ds oh that's kind of funny i did have a ds but yeah i didn't oh, play them like tactics <laughs> or whatever uh-huh yeah <clears throat> yeah it's just uh you know <laughs> there's so many games that like i haven't played because of that so that i feel like i should go back and play but then the problem is there's always just so many games coming out every just constantly that i also mm -hmm. want to play it just never ends uh, i was talking about yep. this a couple days ago too it's, uh, oh, also, I just realized you sent it already. Okay, I was, okay, there we go. Yeah, I sent, I'm trying to look for a better one. I thought I had saved it somewhere, but okay. I don't know if I can find it. I'll find it eventually, well, maybe. Well, we can, we'll this is, this is, should be okay, I think. Yeah, we can start with that. Um, I find a clear, I thought I had saved the clear image of just the math questions. Right. But I'm not sure if I had saved it. <laughs> okay. I did it on my. That's fine. How are program, you, how are you working, how are you doing it, anyway? <laughs> what were you using? So I opened. I opened up, I believe, my art program, which is uh, open canvas on mm -hmm. Steam. And then I had just drawn, like, you know, I have a tablet pen right. or whatever. And I had just drawn the my math problems on the on the art program. Mm -hmm. So I thought I had seen some Right, that's why I was not. wondering. I was just wondering because I figured, because I wasn't sure if it was like a, yeah, if it was something that was actual software or something. Okay, I got to get my tablet. Yeah. Oh, jeez. My desk, my desk space is running <laughs> running very you clean it. well no it's just because i only i don't have it's just kind of not that much space it's not even that i have to clean oh. it it's just like i have i should probably just move my keyboard completely out of the way because i'm not going to be using it but it's just here getting mm. in the way now but also yeah thanks everyone for uh stopping in and for those of you that are following thank you so we're going to try to, we're going to do some math here. So I think some of you probably some math. <laughs> probably saw uh, Ryoko attempt these problems a while back. So, and I think she's already explained to you a little bit of the premise, which is that as a while back, she asked, she said, oh, can you write some math problems for me to do on stream? And I said, sure, I'll write, I'll just write up a sheet of problems that, that covers a wide range of topics and levels. Um, 
and so yeah, she she did them on stream at one point. I've I've watched bits and pieces of it, although I actually never got around to watching it in its entirety, which I kind of regret. It's my fault. But so it goes. I was supposed to send in the vod for it, but no, no. I got so busy. No, because I just mean I didn't even watch it, even when it was on Twitch. I just I kept meaning to watch it, but then not having a chance to, and then and then it was gone. <laughs> it's me. It was my fault. Um. <laughs> Where did I save that image? Oh my goodness. I'm getting like, I'm like trying to multitask that's, and explain. That's me too. I'm like, where did I save my image? Because I'm uh, trying to find a better picture for you. And I'm right. like, I'm pretty sure I saved it somewhere. Where is there's so many things going on right now? This. I have my art program open. I have my folders open. I have my, the Twitch open. I have my Discord open. Yeah. I have so many things. I know. I'm trying to like pay attention to everything going on. In the chat as well. Right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny watching yeah. your stream. <laughs> okay. Thanks for popping in. I'm sorry I took a, a bit longer than uh yeah, it's okay. I expected. I was just rambling since uh, on, I was just rambling about different about games and stuff until you got here. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think I saved it. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, Chrono Trigger, Dylan. That's a game. By the way, Camomillion or Camo or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if you were there for the for the stream, but um, when um, I think it was Seri Eki, who's one one of my friends on Twitter. Uh, she had she had raided my stream, and then Dylan pops in, right? Dylan likes pie, mm -hmm. and I. I called him like Dylan. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Hi, Dylan." <laughs> wait, have you not? I was is, like, wait. Is that how you pronounce that name? For you? <laughs> no, normally, no. But okay. when I first saw it, I didn't realize it was Dylan. And I was like, oh, wait, no, Dylan. Why am I pronouncing it Dylan? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <coughs> well, I guess this is fine. All right. So, yeah, I'm just using yeah, an art so program here to do this. So, I think you might see a bit of Dylan. Oh, in the sorry. There. Okay. It was Yariko san. Yeah, sorry. There was a. F I need to go back and remember that there was a lot of you guys who had raided. I'm super surprised. Normally, I don't get raided by so many people. There may have been like yeah, three or four that's... of you. <laughs> but Yari, okay, Yariko san. All right, there's another person uh, who was Sidiyaki that had raided me. Okay. But, yeah. <clears throat> so I think it should be on stream. Yeah, there. It's good. We're, it's shown up. You have okay. the original questions, right? I do have them also, yeah. And I can pull those okay, up. Okay, cool. Um, All right. Mine's like blurry. Yeah, so it's I'm a little bit. Yeah, I'll program. pull those up too. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, are you able to flip my my model around? So I'm actually looking at the questions. Oh sure, yeah yeah sure. <laughs> cool cool. I mean it, it doesn't matter too much, but I'm like uh, I'm just looking off into the recommended channels on my Twitch. Uh, let's see. <coughs> uh, oh, it's locked. Hold on. Boom. <laughs> You talk about that, right? My 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 face on the left side? Yeah, yeah. I flipped it. Okay. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it. E yeah, I guess my my it'll, stream's lagging a little it'll bit. It'll show up it'll in a moment, there. I guess. Uh, let's yeah. see. Can I put this in here? Oh boy. Uh Oh, there it is. Yeah, I see. I see it. Okay. Whoops, this is the wrong one. I, ignore that. <laughs> That's the one with the answers. <laughs> oh, the answers. Oops. <laughs> I mean, not That's that so that matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at my friend. Uh, was it Damien? Uh, he was posting on on that picture that I had sent you. Uh, Ryoko giving the soul's piercing stare. Yeah. That's when I, I think I had stepped away to use a restroom or something. And my model was just like staring at the, <laughs> into the abyss. <laughs> Where the heck? <clears throat> okay, so. Come on. I can't remember where I've saved all these. Okay. Oh, so it's something, it's it's interesting seeing my model facing the other way and then mirroring it. And it's like, yo, my model looks so much different when my bangs are facing the yeah, other way. Yeah, that was the thing. I was like, it it is technically not symmetrical, even though it's almost symmetrical. <clears throat> but it's like... <laughs> Makes you wonder if it'll be it's, enough to yeah, notice, it, it's right? Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I know, like, my model is also mostly symmetrical, it except is. for, yeah, like, the hair. And obviously the shirt is is a design, <laughs> which, that doesn't oh, matter. Oh, yeah, the, the fish. Yeah. It's, it's a fine, chameleon, it's actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Dylan says the best part was when- Oh, your uh, shirt. Yeah, I was Nico talking about my shirt. You. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I figured that out after a, yeah. like a second. <laughs> Dylan says the best part was when uh, Yariko raided you and you shouted me out instead. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> I saw your name like a bunch and I had to scroll up because I usually when I stream, I'm a little bit late on the chat. Like I'll try to follow along, but then like you guys talk about such interesting things that I start rambling and then it takes me a lot to get to the bottom of the chat. <laughs> okay, here here are the problems. Okay, we have we have them. <laughs> I, so the no problem is check lightning round. while i'm looking at this it's hard for me to actually see stream okay <laughs> everything looks like it's showing up properly i sh i tried to yes. set the window so that it should be i should be able to manage it properly <laughs> but hopefully if anything is not visible that i'm talking about chat will let me know um but for now yeah okay so here we go so right so maybe section one right was just <laughs> knowledge check and as it says here um this section consists of quick questions, which you'll probably know or remember what to do instantly or not at all. So a lot of this is, uh, these are questions which, if you know how to do them, they'd be simple. And if you don't, they, you, you probably wouldn't just, just would, would not be able to answer it without learning the subject. So or let's like, see. like, how yeah. did you pass high school? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at to least be, for the first few questions, yeah. Yeah, to be honest, high school only doesn't even cover that far for a lot of these. Or if you do, it, it's easy to forget. I, you know, I understand that completely. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> so here are your answers. Okay, we. I might have to, let me see if I can line these up better. Uh, whoops. Let me remove this one. Or let me just move it down here. So that I can actually just switch between them more easily. Okay. So yeah, we have the first few problems here. Uh, we have number one, what is two plus two? Which, of course, you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, four. 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 What is 13 squared? 169. Great. So, I mean, I, 2 plus 2, you presumably did not do any work for, as you probably shouldn't no. need to. <laughs> yep. The math, it burns me. Yeah, I get that reaction a lot when I tell people that I've studied math. This, uh, this is a response a lot of people give. <laughs> They're yep. mortified by the, the notion that I would study math. Uh, 13 squared, I can see you did the work here. 13 squared. Uh, well, 13 times 13, and then... You, you got to 169 correctly. Good job. All right, then the next problem, two to the negative three. So your answer here is two. So I'm curious, uh, I, I, you, this is something which, if you don't know what it means, like the negative exponents, <laughs> it's, it's uh -huh. hard to guess what it would mean. Um, yes. So what, did you, what were you thinking? Um. Hold on, can we go back to the original? Yeah, yeah sorry, yeah, yeah. This is a little back. blurry here. Hold on, maybe, fault, let, me show I... you, let me share my screen with you so you can see it immediately and not have to wait for the... Oh, okay, okay, on on a Discord, yeah. yeah. I I was trying to look up a better picture, um, because I, I should have taken a better picture of this on my PC, sorry, and I should have... I should have put aside time to uh, look this all up earlier. That's fine. It's not. It's no problem. <laughs> We're just uh, having a casual math chat, you know? Casual math chat. That's, math a, thing, that's a thing that most people casual say, what in the world? That makes no sense. You can't just have a casual math <laughs> chat. But believe me, when you study math in college and grad school, you can have lots of casual <laughs> math chats. <laughs> When you're when you're an adult, you just you just casually <laughs> for fun dream doing math problems. Right, yeah, this is <laughs> just normal things, normal that's things to stream. That's yeah. what happens when you become an adult. You can talk about math. <laughs> oh all my time. goodness, I know. Imagine a kid, right? Like, <laughs> like you mean you just do math? You stream? You do math on stream for fun? That makes no sense. <laughs> it's like yeah. Like, why do you think math teachers actually teach you math in high school? Because they're preparing you for adult. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is for you to stream it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for you to stream it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's um, the problem. So two to the negative three. I'm curious. So what was your what were you your, your thinking on this? <laughs> what was my what was I thinking? Or, what, no, I mean, uh, what is what it, is your thought process <laughs> with regards to what that could mean? Because I will tell you, I will I will tell you your <laughs> answer, which you gave, I think, as two is uh incorrect is me is incorrect of yeah. course 
Um, let's see. Trying to let me open up the thing again. Right, so what I had right. done was for number was it number two? Number three. Number three. Yeah. It's equal to two. And I think what I did was um for some reason I did a two times two times two, mm -hmm. which is two times two is four, times two is eight. Mm -hmm. And then I I think I had made it into a fraction, which it looks like it's what I had below on the stream. Uh two divided by two minus two. Uh, you what? actually, I mean, so what you've said in words actually is uh -huh. about, is approaching the right answer. So um, I'm actually smart. I just don't do it the right way. <laughs> actually know what I need to do, huh? But, so uh, is, yeah. So it, you turn it into a fraction. Maybe that's what I did on, so here's, on the stream. Yeah, so <clears throat> certainly, uh, whoops, let me, mm -hmm. let me get a, so two plus two. two so is... if it's two to the third power, that would mean two times two times two. But if it's two to the negative three, I would imagine. Although I don't know if I did this on stream, but two divided by two divided by two, because it's negative. I see. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's getting closer and closer. Yeah, actually, you have the right intuition here. So yeah. Good. Good. So I'm not that dumb. as you've seen here, thirteen <laughs> squared. Right. We know that this is thirteen times <clears throat> thirteen. Yeah. Right. So two to the negative <clears throat> two. Yeah. Or two to a negative number, as you sort of suspected, means dividing. But you don't yeah. start with a two, because you can imagine here oh. you have a secret one times whatever, times this over and over. Sure. So in this <laughs> case, what it is would be one. And really, the, the easiest way to think about it is that two, if you multiply by two to the negative one, you're multiplying by one half, which is to say dividing mm. by two. So the answer here is one half times one half times one half, with it, which is one eighth. Now the other way to think about this, of course, as you said, two times two, two cubed, two times two times two is eight. So then yes. two yeah, to the yeah. negative that's three a, is a, just one over eight. So the negative and the exponent, really the easiest way to think about it is to just flip <clears> it <throat> as a fraction. Oh, is right. that what? Is that what you need to do for all negative exponents? Yes, exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, okay. So if it was thirteen to the minus uh, thirteen to the thirteen with the power of negative two, that would mm -hmm. be one out of one hundred sixty nine. Exactly. Like one one sixty nine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As a fraction. Mm -hmm. Oh, yo, I, my my teachers probably taught me this when I was in high school or middle school. I don't know. <laughs> I just do not remember. It's been. Yeah, a while. negative <laughs> exponents don't come up that often, so a lot of times people don't uh, really. Uh, remember them if they have seen them. So the reason that it works out this way is, or rather, it's you can kind of understand it maybe also from the fact that 2 squared times 2 squared, right? How would you combine these? Well, this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the 4th, right? So here we have 2 to the 2 squared, which we get 2 to the 2 plus 2. And so if you want to take 2 to the 2 times 2 to the negative 3, then you would have to, you just want to add these together, you get 2 to the negative 1. I mean, okay, I'm kind of glossing through a lot of stuff here. But the yeah. idea is that when you're multiplying numbers together, you can yeah. add the exponents instead. Oh, okay. And so negative... Number. I mean, that makes sense. Right, so negative has to is oh. just the opposite of multiplying then, which means dividing. You divide 2 divided by... Uh, wait. So it'd be 2 divided by 3 as an exponent, which would be 1 uh, something something. What you write, you wrote there, right? So <laughs> this, I've done 2 to the 2 times 2 to the negative 3 <clears throat> is uh, going to be 2 to the power of 2 plus negative three, so two minus three, right? Two minus three would be negative one. Right, so you get two to the negative one. Two to the negative one. Which, as we've kind of seen, that would be mm -hmm. one half. Yeah, yeah, because it would be two, well, it'd be, I mean, two to the power of one would just be two, but Correct. since it's a negative, you need to make it into a fraction. Yeah, so when, since it's oh, the so negative, <laughs> it just becomes one over two. Yes. Yeah. So here's now maybe another <laughs> bonus question then. You've, so 2 to the 1 is 2, like you said. Yeah. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 
Uh-huh. So can you guess what two to the zero is going to be? Z wait. <laughs> It'd be zero because... That's a good guess. It's a good guess. Let's see. Two to the zero power... Two to the... Because you don't multiply it by anything. Yeah, right. You don't multiply it by zero, anything. Yeah. Would it just be two? <laughs> so what was the starting number that we were meant, we were saying we start with? We started with two, right? To the power of zero? Well, if you remember, I kind of mentioned there's sort of a secret one being multiplied by everything a here. Secret one being multiplied yeah. up there. So two to the zero so is actually. If it's just one, one normally, yeah. then it would be two. But if it was zero, then that would be there's nothing there. So you mm -hmm. would you would think it's zero, right? So you just don't multiply is by anything. Nothing? So you start with one and you don't multiply anything, and so the answer is just one. Is that what happens with everything to the power of zero? Yes. Yes, that's the, the right one, thinking. It all becomes one, because yeah. there's secret one up there. Yeah, because there's the, the secret one that you're multiplying <laughs> things by. So when you're multiplying it multiple times, you're multiplying it with mm -hmm. the starting one. So the reason for that really is one here is the multiplicative identity. And so whatever that is, is just that's where you start for exponents. Uh, right, so it is just one. And as you've, as you've guessed, anything okay. to the power of zero is going to be one. Okay, even if it's like a million to the power of zero, yep. it'll be one. Right. Yeah, <laughs> By it's the kind way, of a... D Dylan says uh, learning more shit than I did in actual math class. <laughs> yep. Yo, Camomilla, um, uh, you should do more math streams. Yeah, I would love <laughs> teach, to. Teach people actual math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to. I would, I would enjoy that. It's just a lot of work. But I'll, I mean, I would totally do it. It it's is just, a lot uh, of work. You know, hopefully I can find people who actually are interested in it. I was kind of talking about this when I first started the stream. It's like, I would love to do more math, but sometimes it feels like, uh, you know, there's not exactly an audience for it because people don't really come to a stream on Twitch for math. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I mean, I like, I mean, I, I think I've kind of, um, one of my friends kind of uh, outed me as a, as a, as a teacher, but, um, mm. you know, as a teacher, <clears throat> um, what do you call it? I have heard a lot of my students that would watch like YouTube videos of uh, like Indian people teaching math. Yeah, and they well, would, like, I've be heard. Like, Yo, I yeah. learned more from them than my actual teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a pretty common thing to have happen. Mm. The different environments can, you know, change a lot about uh, yeah. what people are able to engage yeah. with. Yep, how it's taught and all that. Like Dylan right. was saying, I uh, create the streams lesson. Plans. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's. <laughs> That's the work part of I, it. <laughs> I, I think people will be interested in it. Yeah, maybe I'll give it a shot. It could be fun. I, I would like to do it. Um, like, watching streams about video games is, like, cool and all, but, yo, how many people stream math? I mean, on, that is true. Math? That is a fair point, right? Like, <laughs> right? There's not... I was kind of talking about this, too. Is like, I always get yeah. kind of... It's weird to me to try to talk about math on stream because... I'm so, the, the environments that I'm used to talking about math in are ones where there's a whole bunch of people who are also better than me at math, right? Like being oh. surrounded by professors and better grad students who know more than I do and things like mm. that. So, but then it's realistically, if I'm being real, like honest, if I'm on Twitch, I'm almost mm. always going to know the most math <laughs> out of the people who probably, are there. Probably, yeah. Or at least <laughs> more than most people <laughs> who are showing mm. up. So it's kind of, uh, it's, but it's, it's hard to get out of that mindset of thinking, oh, well, there's plenty of people who know all this stuff, but realistically there, there aren't, you know? So it's mm -hmm. definitely worth considering. Yeah. I think that'd be nice. I mean, if you have fun doing it, like, I, I mean, mean, I'm learning. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while since I've learned about math too. <laughs> Untapped resource, bro. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think, I think that's pretty standard. I think most people are going to feel that way. So I don't. You know, it's probably, but at the same time, it's, I have to find a way to convince people that they would want to also learn it. <laughs> no, I mean, tell them, hey, if you want to pass high school, watch yeah. my stream. Right, right. That's it right there. <laughs> that's their motivation to come to your yeah, stream. Yeah, that seems. Passing high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, college that seems like, a, <laughs> seems like a promise that could be dangerous to make. <laughs> They're like, yo, I didn't pass. And you're just like, um, well, I, I tried my hardest. Sorry, bud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. So. Yeah. All right. Cool. So let's, uh, <laughs> we've talked about that one. Let's, let's check. I think you had the right answer for the next one. Oops. So let mm. me. Uh, 
Yeah, that was me with all of my work that I had. I'm like, uh, I need more space. <laughs> I, I had so much stuff written all over the place. Right. Yeah, I just keep sh moving it around. <laughs> all right, so this next one. Um, got 11 out of 15, it, it looks like. Number four? The fractions, yeah. Which is correct. Yeah, I had 11 out of 15, I think, yeah. Right, so 11 out of 15. So what I had done, mm -hmm. yeah, well, I think what I had done was multiply the two bottoms, which yep. is 15, and then do, do, do the thing that you need to do. Yeah, yep. that's what I did. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah, so you did this. Uh, 5 over 5 times 1 over 3 is 5 over 15. And then 3 over 3 times 2 over 5 is oh, yeah, it's on the 6 over yeah, 15. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you add those together, right? Yeah, the 5 and a 6. Yeah, so... Which is 11 mm -hmm. and 15. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly right. So the, the reason mm -hmm. there, of course, is uh, you need the least common denominator, right? That's a very, very standard, mm -hmm. like, high school math term, least common denominator. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, the reason for that is, of course, that it's just that's the easiest way to add. Because if they have the same denominator, then you can just add them as numbers. And so... You just find a number that matches them, and uh, you're good to yeah. go. <laughs> need more Sorry, space. I was just... Yeah, yeah that, that was reading Dylan's... Damn, I need more space. Yo, yeah. I felt that so hard when working on math. Your whole notebook is just, like, yep. scribbled all across the side and the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got sick of writing it out. Paper never has enough space. I just want to say the answer to move on. Yeah, yeah. I definitely can understand that. I remember when I was in high school, uh, that was for, you know, when you're... A lot of the math problems you can kind of do pretty easily and just write it out. But when you go into actually studying math, you realize how important the process is. A lot of the time it's more important than the answer. And uh, <laughs> so it's very important yeah. to write out your work to show that you understand what you're doing. And then if you, so here's the thing, when you get to that point, right, if you write out your answer and you make a mistake, you can still often get credit for the work you did, even if the answer is not quite mm. right. You just won't get all full credit. I think I've had that too. But I've also had, um, cause like, you know, my mom's Japanese, so she would teach me the Japanese way to do fractions and oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then my, my teacher in, you know, not exactly America, but you know, American teacher, whatever. Right. Anyways, they would teach me a different way to add fractions or whatever it was that they had taught me at the time. And so I would do the Japanese way cause my mom taught me it, mm -hmm. like division or whatever. And they're just like, it looks different than how I'm teaching it. You should do how I do it. And I'm yeah. like, but it gets to the I know, same I hate answer. That. That's that's annoying. <laughs> Why I had, does it matter? <laughs> I had a situation in middle school geometry class yeah. where I I couldn't remember the method that we were taught to. It was I don't remember even exactly what it was. It had to do with like it was just a an geometry thing with angles or something, and I couldn't remember the way to do it. So I like actually rederived a, a way to do it just like from because it was like using compass and protract or compass and uh ruler constructions and I, like i just like was like figured found a way to do it and then i didn't get credit and i was like i'm pretty sure this works i don't see why this wouldn't work this seems fine and then but it was it wasn't a big deal it was like a couple points so i just mm. eventually i just had to let mm. it go but Aww. yeah but yeah it's kind of interesting because the thing about like having just the answer mm. i've definitely mm -hmm. seen p students who would write a uh, like when i was taing in like college and grad school and stuff they would write just the answer, or they would do the, they would not write just the answer, they'd write out the work, but then their work would be wrong, and then they would end up at the yeah. right answer, and I was like, I, mean, I can't really I give you that. credit for this, this work <laughs> makes no sense, it doesn't even match up with how, like, you somehow <laughs> arrived at the right number by accident. <laughs> yeah. But I usually would like, give them a point chaos? for the answer, at least. I give them the amount of points I would have given them if they just had written the answer and no work, basically. Uh, right. But, uh, yeah. That, oh, and then the mm -hmm. other thing I was going to say, though, is later on also, if you... I mean, this doesn't come up for most people because most people don't study math, and so it's not really an mm -hmm. issue. But eventually, math problems stop having answers that you can just write down. The answer is the work because you have to prove a, a, a result. Oh, you, no. like, you're given. I don't think I've gotten <laughs> to that point. <laughs> you, you mostly don't because you don't really see that until you get to upper division math in most cases. Uh. uh I didn't get there. So you have to, <laughs> I'm a dumb, dumb. you have to like, they give you basically a, a principle, a rule, and you have to prove why it is true. So then of course, mm -hmm. at that point, there's no answer to prove your, there's, there's no answer to, to give. You just have to, you have to say, well, because of this, then this, then this. It's like the turning point for a lot of math students or a lot of prospective math students is doing proof-based math and learning. Mm. It's a little bit different than maybe what they were 
uh, expecting. Yeah, I think when I was taking, uh, was it geometry? Mm -hmm. A lot of it is about theorems, right? Or the theory yep. of how... I don't even remember yeah. much because honestly, my teacher was, uh, she was on sick leave most of the she wasn't even in class most of the time so we would just try to teach ourselves or come up with our own theories or whatever it is right like i don't think we even learned it properly but i do remember there was a lot of theories a lot of written work like geometry is more writing uh, yeah, like word problem sort sense. of things and writing than actually writing numbers mm -hmm. and solving things from what i remember yeah i think <clears throat> yeah there's a lot of times where it's just about like a lot of it comes down to uh, proving proving why the area of a, what, yeah, or a like, cube is this. Yeah, getting getting a lot of the form like finding showing a lot of the formulas work the way they yeah. that they do. Yeah. They're proving and writing theory. There, there's so much writing in geometry. Yeah. Those are <laughs> those at least usually are are not too bad because you at least know in the end where you should end up. <laughs> Cuz mm. definitely there's some problems that you will see in math where the the question is basically just what is this what what is this true and you have to either prove it's true or prove it's not true <laughs> it's yeah. like, uh well okay great let's uh let's check the next problem let's see oh this one i'm good at when it comes to variables and stuff yeah. it's like yo i i remember that so well algebra from high yeah. school mm -hmm. no, nothing else though <laughs> yeah, this is something a lot of people a lot of people uh yeah in like algebra in high school they learn this and it sticks with them because it's kind of a it is, yeah. has a very like tactile element to it where you're moving things around uh -huh. it's almost like you're solving yeah. a puzzle so it's yeah it sticks with a lot of people I think um, the equal sign is really helpful because you're like, everything has to be the opposite on the other end. Right, you know it has to work out to this. And so you just have to yeah. move things around until they work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That yeah, was, so I... I got, I got five correct. Yeah, you did, I think. I think you said... Uh, oh, what say? Well, Two... Uh, what, what is it? Oh, I can't even read it. Five what? Oh, shit, it's so tiny. What did I write there? I think... I can do it real quick, I though. think you wrote negative one. It looks well, like a negative one. Which okay, is correct. See. So you, you, um, let's see, but we, do we still follow PEMDAS? Um. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Sort of? Hmm. Uh. Minus the five on the other side. Yeah. Which would be negative three, and then you divide three by negative three, and mm -hmm. that would be whatever I wrote for the answer. Yep, x <laughs> equals negative one, exactly. Yeah, so you, yeah, you move the five over, and you divide by three, you get I negative one. And of course, you could check this, right? You plug in negative one here, you get three times negative mm. one is negative three plus five is equal to two. Yeah. So it checks out. Sweet. Yeah, that, that I'm good with, mm -hmm. usually. All right, so that was the first, that's a, a linear equation. So this is called a linear, well, it's a little bit strange. I mean, it's a, it's almost linear. It's mm. <laughs> We've given it a value and we're just evaluating, but uh, all right, so next one, you wrote, you got two, I think. <clears throat> which number six. Yeah, is a correct answer. So here's something interesting. Oh, sweet. Yes. So how did you do this? Let's, uh... <clears throat> Number six, uh... I... Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I wrote out, like, what I need to do, like, uh... Over on... Let's see. 3x plus 5 equals... T no, that's not the oh, yeah, one. Yeah, next one. What is this one? 3 to the times... Uh, where y did I y write squared this? minus oh, y is equals 2. It's in the square. Do you, yeah. see the, do you see the square, the rectangle, on my work? So what I did was I multiply three. Uh, to I I use the parentheses first, right? So I multiply three to the three times the z to the second power. I think that's what it was, and then I times that by oh, the uh, the plus one as well. I I was it the foil method? Oh, the this is sorry. Word? This is the next. This is the next one. I'm talking about number six. <clears throat> number six. I thought that was number six. I think that's number seven. Oh, oh number six. Shoots. What's what's that one? y squared minus y equals 2. Okay, I also have it open on my own end. Let me do... Okay. Where did I write that? Hey, y thanks for the subscription, squared by the way. Minus... <laughs> Oh, yo! Oh, wait, I see it. y squared... Wait, no. I think Is I see... <laughs> it. I think it kind no, of looks like you no. just... Uh... <clears throat> did I just mentally do it? You, might have, just, you my... might have just guess and checked <laughs> it, which... Maybe. I mean, works. Did I get it correct? <laughs> you got... I, I mean that does work. Uh, yeah. 
so yeah, so you, I think what you did, right, you have y squared minus y equals 2, and you said, well, 2 squared minus 2 is 4, four minus 2, which is 2, so 2 is the answer, right? I think that's what, how you did it, it looks like, from, from what I can see in the work here. Right, I can see it here. 2 squared equals 4 minus 2 equals 2. So that is correct, but there is actually, here's something tricky, is that there's actually more than one answer to this problem. What? Yeah, so y equals 2 is one of the correct answers, but there are actually two. So there are, so one way you can see this is, as you said, y squared minus y, you just plug in 2. If it helps, y squared minus y is equal to y times y minus 1. Whoops, I'm writing on the wrong layer. <laughs> That's a every artist dilemma. They're like, oops, I'm drawing on the wrong layer. And then they just cry because they've yeah. already drawn so much on the wrong layer. I know, it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> math. The worst. <laughs> yeah. Yup, math. <laughs> the crying cat. Is uh, that crying? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> it is it's funny to see public reactions to math. That's that's a very common sentiment. <laughs> Yep. Frankly, as a math student, I understand that better than most people. <laughs> I think you, math students are the ones you who will, are most likely to tell you that math is hard. <laughs> so if you see this, okay, this is potentially a way you could make it a little bit easier on yourself. Because you see y times y minus 1 has to equal 2. So you need two things that multiply together to give you 2. Now that being said, that still doesn't really help you that much. The way, the easiest way to do this is you take y squared minus y and you move the 2 over, right? So yes. by subtracting from both sides, you get this. y squared minus y equal, minus 2 equals 0, right? Mm -hmm. And you plus 0 on the other, or plus 2 on the other side? Well, that would just take you back to where we started, mm. right? Oh, right, right. But from here, there's a few ways we can handle this. Okay. So 1... Do you recall the quadratic equation or quadratic formula? The quadratic formula. Uh, it's because this is. Is it, a, is it a squared plus b squared equals c squared? No, that is the Pythagorean <laughs> theorem. Good guess, though. We talked about that yes, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> quadratic, is that the one with the b, with the b and the, yeah. the division sign and the whole bunch of stuff underneath it? There is. It? Yeah, that, is, that does <laughs> with sound the like. fraction at no point. Yeah, that does sound like a description of it. So this is what we call a quadratic equation, or yeah, quadratic equation, or quadratic. It's just a quadratic polynomial. Uh, um, what's a, okay, I'll go along with this. Right. So uh, there is a, a meaning to that. The important thing is that we're taking y squared. So the the highest power of y is two, right? We have y squared, and we have a y. It's the one, and a, if you recall, y to the zero is times is one, right? Yes. Well, anything to the zero. The power of zero, yeah, it'll be exactly. just one. So, so I could plug yeah. a secret y to the zero in here. <clears throat> because it's just multiplying it by one. But that's not important. We can ignore that for the time being. The uh, y squared minus one equals two. It's discriminant. Uh, so a discriminant is a different thing. Um, usually re related to matrices. That's the most common t situation where you'd talk about discriminants. But mm -hmm. here's something you can do. So the, here's the quadratic f formula. I can't remember the exact word, but uh, is that x? Well, they usually use x, but in this case, we'll say y mm -hmm. is equal to. Oh wait, I I got sidetracked. We have a. Wait. wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just found. Um, I'll send you another picture of my work, oh, okay. which is a clearer photo. I finally found it. Okay. So continue. Great. So this is the form for every quadratic polynomial a times y squared plus b times y plus c is equal to zero is the important part here so that's not the quadratic formula is it no not yet but this is a quadratic okay. polynomial so that's where we're able to use the quadratic formula uh-huh so in this case what would you say a b and c are uh <laughs> 
So <laughs> what A, B, and C, B? Yeah, what are A, B, and C? What are the no uh, the value? What's the number for A, B, and C? If we have Y squared minus Y minus 2 equals 0. Y squared minus Y... Y squared, oh, we're on the right side. Y squared minus Y to the Hello, one power minus two equals zero. And then this is also zero. Then A, wouldn't A and B and C also be one? Wait, D would be negative two, right? B, so you're talking about this one, right? <clears throat> the last C, part? Yeah, for the bottom. So C would yeah, be negative two. Yes. C would be negative two. Good. B would be... Negative one. Good. A would be one. A would be one. Yeah, exactly. Yo, I got it. <laughs> um, so A is one, B is negative one, C is, ne is equal to. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Hope for Hello. Humanity. Thanks for joining yeah, in. Yeah, thanks for Hope helping for in. Humanity is in grade six. They're like, I have no idea what this is. Yeah. One day you'll get yeah, there. Yeah, one day. <laughs> I assume, right. Yeah, yeah. this is... Uh, <laughs> this is mostly most commonly seen in high school so <laughs> yeah i was gonna say uh chamomile and you found your audience right <laughs> apparently <laughs> although um, a little too early maybe <laughs> maybe so the you quadratic equation here is that y is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a okay so this is a way to do any to find the to solve any equation of this mm. form for the quadratic right any any quadratic polynomial you can find the solutions to this way so if we start plugging things in here we'll get uh y is equal to uh, what is this one or negative times negative one plus or minus the square root of one or well, negative one squared minus four times one times negative two over two times one. Yeah. Math hard, but math pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I, you know, anyone who studied math will basically agree that math is hard, but also pretty cool. It's all about balance, a lot of memorization. Yeah. Hi, Leon. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> Hi, Leon. I hope you're, uh, hello. This, I hope, I'm middle, almost middle-aged, and this makes me realize how uneducated I am. No, no, I mean, again, this is the kind of stuff which a lot of people, even if they did learn, they would forget. But also, you know, it's mostly stuff that, uh, it's, it can be useful to know, but especially things like this, you don't necessarily, it doesn't come up enough for it to be important. The only time the quadratic formula pops up, or one of the only times, is if you decide, uh, hey, you know what? You know what's fun? Streaming math problems. Yeah. Hey, Camomillion, can you write me some math problems so I can stream it and me answering it? Yep. <laughs> Aside from, uh, you know, if you're actually a math teacher or whatever, but I don't mm -hmm. know. What, what, uh, Camomillion, honest question. Mm -hmm. What would you use the quadratic formula for? So... <clears throat> the pro in like for the average person in random day to day life, probably not uh -huh. much. But uh -huh. if you're actually trying to, uh, but as far as mathematical purposes go, this kind of thing is very important in physics, for example, because okay. quadratic polynomials describe the motion of something with constant acceleration. For example, anything falling under gravity. <laughs> so okay. For example, if you're going to throw something, shoot something into the air, and you want to know when it's going to land, that requires something like the quadratic formula. Or, that is to say, solving a, poly a quadratic polynomial. So you plug... I'm not sure how you would plug that in, but okay. So if you right. need to... So I've, okay, okay. I've written it out here. Physics. We have y equals mm -hmm. negative b plus or minus blah, 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 mm -hmm. b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So b is, negative b here is 1. B mm -hmm. squared then is negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times t negative 2 over 2 times 1. Okay. And uh, now I've started, I've already done all the simplification here. Y is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared is 1, or negative 1 squared is 1, and negative 4 times 1 times negative 2 is 8. Mm -hmm. 
So we add those together. We get one plus or minus the square root of nine over two. And square root of nine is three. So we get one plus or minus three over two, which is, well, four over two or uh, negative two uh... over two. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> which is two or negative one. So the, our answers then, oops, I might have, that may have gone off screen, are two or negative one. So you got one of them, y equals two. Mm -hmm. The other one is negative one. So we can check this, negative one squared minus negative one would be equal to one plus one, six, right. which is two. Six, yeah. Yep. I, so wait, so num so was this for number six? Mm-hmm. Uh yes, number six, okay. yeah. Oh I got the I got that one, yeah. Number two. Oh, I also sent the picture on uh Discord. I, I sent a yes. new one which is actually clear. Okay, oh perfect. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll perfect. Yeah. So as you as you get that um popped up, I just wanted to go through the chat. Mm -hmm. Um let's see where we're at. Uh Dylan says uh, it's so easy to forget when you don't use it every day. Yeah, that's true. I mean I haven't used math in like a really Yeah uh, a really definitely. I mean I'm like a four hundred and one year old dragon, so yeah. it's been quite some time. Right. I mean, she even I don't the... use this stuff every day, but you just, yeah. it's just, <laughs> and, take and... some time. Yeah. Uh, Shiro says, what you decide is the discriminant. Oh, that was for the earlier question. Yeah, uh, so. Dylan says, I would love to watch the discriminant you play is... Brain Aid. The discriminant, if I recall correctly, for, okay, <clears throat> this is, this has been so long. I'm trying to remember. I think it relates, I think it's part of the quadratic formula. I don't remember. I'll Google it. Hold on. I, I honestly can't remember. Okay, so the discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac, and that's because that, right, I'm remembering now, it's coming back to me. Uh, so the discriminant is this section, uh, does my cursor show up on the stream, actually, now that I think about it? I think so. Uh, I don't see it right now. Okay, so the discriminant is this section here. Hmm. And that's because okay, yeah, I see, I see the value of that tells you uh, how many solutions there are, whether there are two, one, or zero solutions. And I won't go into detail on that, but that's the purpose of the discriminant there. I would love to watch you play Brain Age or those Nintendo games. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The uh, uh, Yo, I loved Brain Age. <laughs> yeah. That made me feel smart. Like, it's like kind of putting your brain on like... um. What's the wheels that the rats run on? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's I like, I, what is it's the name like for running them? your brain? Hamster wheel. Yeah, I forgot what those are called. <laughs> it's like keeping your brain. It's like ex uh, exercising your brain. That, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> it was like exercising your brain. And, um, no, I, on, like, I think when I was in college, I had played a lot of brain age and also professor Layton games. Which oh, are, professor you know, Layton is games. fun. Those are just fun. Just puzzle so, games. Yeah. Yes. They're great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when I was playing professor Layton and I was in college, I felt like my brain was, it remembered things better. It was like, I felt like I was smarter mm -hmm. when I stopped playing professor Layton. I was like, I'm forgetting things often. And I just felt kind of dumb. And it, I guess it's kind of just like exercising your brain in a way. <laughs> you know, puzzle games or math or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it's really good. I mean, uh, I mean, this is probably not an issue for most people, but it's a good way to just keep your brain uh, healthy as you get older. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely an even issue. Even just for doing me. small things like that. Yeah. <laughs> also, you um, you inspired the young generation of hope. <laughs> yeah, to go. Uh, they're saying, uh, "I'm a search. search I'm a search up. What the heck is a quadratic formula?" Yeah. I mean, hey, you, you good for you. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Hope right. for the future. Hope for humanity. <laughs> Biggest math people I've ever met were farmers, <laughs> snipers, and border men. I've been more of an English and history guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I farmers with um, the fertilizers, right? Right. Like, I mean, there's a lot of things. We need math. Yeah, there's a lot of math, a lot of ratios, and and uh, it's important to keep track of a lot of things. And mm -hmm. <laughs> snipers and border men. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, mm. a lot of uh, calculation has to go into how to how to do those kinds of things. English and history are cool. I'm much worse at them. I mean, I'm fine. My English is okay. <laughs> but history, I was always bad at. I mean, I, th I think history is interesting. Ooh, I love not history. Good at it. <laughs> I don't remember too much. Yeah, I, mean, no. I just came from like Age of Empires stream. I'm so bad <laughs> at, like at remembering those history, things. But... 
Yeah, I was always interested in it though, partially because of the Age of Empires game that I had played since I was like really young. I'm like, yo, I'm so in- interested about world history and whatnot because of the game, that game from like ages ago. Mm-hmm. I yeah. almost became um. I almost majored in history for I guess I kind of majored in history mm-hmm. for college, but um, because I did a lot of like East Asian history, mm-hmm. but yeah, I was I was always interested in that. <clears throat> Okay, sorry. Let me... I got very sidetracked. Here we go. Here's that. Oh, yeah, no problem. Oops. Yeah, go go pull out that other clear image I have. Okay, I'm gonna go through the is. rest of the chat. Yo, so clear. <laughs> so big. Leon there says, yeah, hope, like, definition, the quadratic equation is an equation done quadratically. Yes. Discriminant is D equals B to the... Uh, the second power minus 4ac. I think you had written that earlier. Maybe? General quadratic formula. Yeah, yeah. That Right. That is the uh, discriminant is 4 b squared minus 4ac. I realized after looking it up. I had kind of forgotten about that, to be honest. Yeah, it's useful for determining how many roots there are. So, um. basically, so as I mentioned to you, we have two answers here, right? And if you just check b squared minus 4ac and look at the, its value... That can tell you immediately how many answers you have. So you would know that there were two answers. Because sometimes there might only be one answer. And sometimes there might be zero answers. There's... What? Yeah. There's more than one answer from... Sometimes there's zero answers for math? What do you mean? <laughs> okay. Variables? Because, for example... Here, well, I mean, I could give you... I could I could tell you one, actually. Let me also... Let me move this, so... This is fine. This is the one I can remove... Um, well, I, th- I thought it was funny. People thought mm. farmers were dumb, but they always had straight A's in my high school and at least math, but not English. Farmers hated reading. I see. I mean, yeah, like I, like I said, I mean, you need a lot of, you need to be able to keep track of a lot of numbers and like, and work with a lot and have a lot of, there's like a lot of precision and things like that to, to farming, I think, right? You need to be able to keep, know how much and keep track of volumes and everything. So. I can, I can definitely imagine it being very useful. Uh, mm. Chameleon solves examples in the Dragon's Age as a support group. Well, I I group. know all the ex- I I wrote the questions, yeah. so I actually know the answers. <laughs> I'm mostly yeah, explaining the answers. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I I had gone through each of these questions on my own stream like a month or so ago, and I had written out like what I had you know how I had done it, and he switches back and forth on the stream okay, um, to his you know his own and my own um and yeah so he's he's going through my thought process yeah the all the blues okay, are the me blue here he's is going good. through no, my my works. chaos i even like separate them or whatever but um so he's trying to look at what i had done and try to see you know see if i had done it correctly or not and then teach me the right answers or the the right uh, formulas I need to use. Some of them I was just like, I have no idea how to do this, and I'm just gonna guess the formula for it. <laughs> so it's probably wrong. <laughs> I mean, hey, Towards it's the good, bottom, good I... to give it a try. Yeah, yeah. That was me in, in every one of my math classes. Um, I didn't have the greatest teachers that taught me, so sometimes I would kind of create my own way to find the answer, and it's probably wrong, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they give you points for trying. Yeah, so definitely. I, I, <laughs> I would definitely give points for trying. I will say that much. Yeah. I always did. Always did. Ooh, math. 3 a.m. math time. Hey, yes. Fennec. What? <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's my brother. For anyone who doesn't know, Fennec is my brother. <laughs> oh, hi. He's awake at 3 a.m., apparently. Yo, hi, hi, Fennec. Yeah, Fennec has heard me ramble about math a lot throughout life. <laughs> um... Okay, so for example, as I mentioned, it is possible to have ones that don't have an answer. And this is a little bit, this is true until you start getting into deeper math, at which point it does have answers again. They just are imaginary, which people, again? people like oh, to, no. uh, people like to meme about imaginary numbers and how that's like the threshold at which they stop believing in math. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're very Dude, important. Complex numbers are very numbers. important for uh for math i think the problem is calling them imaginary is a little bit uh-huh. confusing to people it's to co- it's like to it contrast the notion of real numbers which is what we have otherwise but i mean the fact is they are still uh they're just as real as any real numbers it's just that they are sort of they operate they're kind of an extension of of real numbers i can never understand imaginary numbers 
I th okay, so, well, now I'm going to get sidetracked by that. But an imaginary number, well, the imaginary part, usually denoted as I, is just, is this is literally just, an, I is the value such that I squared is equal to negative 1. Because there are no real numbers such that I squared is equal to negative 1, right? Any number that we square, it's always positive, right? If you square negative 1, you get 1. And that's true for any negative number. Mm -hmm. So I is just a way to give us something that will square to negative 1. But of course, for that to exist, we would have to basically extend the concept of what we're working with. And that's where the notion of imaginary comes in. It's just contrasting it with real. And then it's just basically, it acts as another axis upon which we can think about numbers. Like a different plane of existence or something? <laughs> so in a way, yes. A different yes. dimension of numbers. Uh, the most conventional <laughs> way to depict it, right? We normally have, you, you've seen the real, the number line, right? Here's just a normal number line, right? Yeah, the this negative is, you and You see the this zero in kindergarten, yeah. Uh, well, kindergarten, geez. I learned this in maybe middle school, but okay. <laughs> well, I, I just mean, they usually put it on the wall in kindergarten, right? As a number oh, I line. Didn't, I didn't pay attention. Uh, I was drawing with crayons. There's just usually like a big ruler around the <laughs> wall that has numbers so you can learn counting, right? They just go zero, one, two, <laughs> and whatever. They have numbers written twice, but one of them has a little line next to it. Yeah. And then when we, if you want to work with complex numbers, you just add another axis and say, here's I. Here's to i and so on and now oh, so the yeah, numbers so exist here plane. yeah so this right. number here is going to be 2 plus 2i and it's as simple as that now i say simple of course and that's because the finding a number is quite simple but of course it gets very complicated it gets complex after that uh, i did not know that imaginary yeah i didn't that's a, I didn't that's know a that imaginary map, numbers yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know imaginary numbers went like that. Like if, I mean, I don't think I got to the point of learning mm -hmm. imaginary numbers when I was in high school and or college, but if they had just said it was kind of like X and Y axis and, you know, if they explained it like that, mm -hmm. it would have been a lot easier, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think this is usually the way it's presented for a lot of purposes, but um. fundamentally it's not like <clears throat> the numbers, the way we treat numbers, we're just using this as a way to like represent what, or like to show them and to work with them. But fundamentally, mm -hmm. the number itself exists mm -hmm. independent, right? You can represent it in other ways as well. Although this is kind of the standard way because it's it works the best generally. Uh, I thought imaginary yeah. was a stupid ter term too because all of this is made is imaginary. <laughs> That's sort of true. I think that I people say that math is doesn't exist or that it's fake, and I mean in a way it is sort of they say like oh math is all made up, and I mean that's kind of true. But I think what that a point that that sort of misses and that maybe causes people to uh, lose sight of math is that uh, all of math is built off of, you start with rules that we call axioms. So we start with rules and all of math is built off of them. So it is made up, but it is consistent and it will always work the same way. It's not like we can, uh, so if we change the axioms, you can change the way math works. Um, but it's not like a thing where we're like, arbitrarily deciding i mean we are deciding on the axioms but it's not like something where you can make something up and it will it will has to work you ha it does still have to follow all those rules <laughs> remember i got held back in grade school and after they tutored me and thought i was ready they said just just skip me to second grade they were doing cursive and multiplication as a kid i couldn't wrap my head around four times two being eight <laughs> yeah you know by the way the real homies are um all of you who are in the chat those of you who are, it's like, it's like 3 a.m. or 5 a.m. Yeah, and you're just you're here watching like, us do math. Yo, I want to watch math. <laughs> I want to watch math streams yeah. at 3 a.m. Yo, thanks for joining in. <laughs> it's just, we make up all the, the numbers and problems, but follow that follow these rules that we also made up. But it's useful. Yeah. I mean, that is fair, right? We did also, we are sort of arbitrarily deciding that these are the rules that we want the num things to follow. But as you've said, mm. that's because it's the way that it's most useful. <laughs> We've decided, mm. well, we need a way to understand the world. And if we follow these rules, because this is how the world works, or this is the way things we want things to work, then when we use the, follow those rules, it gives us answers about what we can do, right? So that's, that's sort of the neat thing. Literally argued for an hour why four times two should be six 
It's just a crooked it's plus a crooked sign. Plus <laughs> okay, I love I it. I mean, depends I on the handwriting, Leon. Yeah, it could be a crooked uh, plus <laughs> sign. I remember when you explained that math is just to explain real life things, and that expanded my mind. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's the thing about math, right? We People, there's abstract math, which gets very weird and it's kind of hard to, to understand a lot of the time. But at the end of the day, the purpose of math is to help us understand the world around us uh, in some capacity. So if that's how, what it helps us do, then it's serving its purpose. <laughs> okay, so with imaginary numbers, this gets us back to <clears throat> one of the things I was going to say, which is that we do have a way to have a formula that doesn't really have an answer. So for example, if I asked you uh, y squared plus, okay, I mean, the simple answer here is actually just say, if I said y squared is equal to negative one, then unless we allow for imaginary numbers, this is not possible, right? This does not have an answer. Right, there's no number that squares to equal negative one, unless we allow for y to be equal to I. So that's that's what it comes down to there with regards to ones that don't have an answer. But we can move on. Let's go, let's go to number seven. I think this topic has uh, has been addressed. Math is magic, yeah, <laughs> and friendship is magic. So transitive property of ma says math is friendship. Y you know, as equality is transitive, so that that could work. Now, if it's an implication, yeah. then it doesn't quite work that way. But if we're assuming that is is referring to equality here, then yeah, that that works. <laughs> is is transitive property like um, like alchemy? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> is it? it it is like alchemy when you're working in math. <laughs> <laughs> it turns things into in other things. Terms. Yeah, yeah. The transitive property just says so. It does. The most common. Uh, context for the transitive property is just with equality, right? If we know a is equal to two and, uh, you know, b is equal to two, then by the transitive property, we we know that, it, well, okay, this is a little bit, this is kind of a bad way to write it. If we have a is equal to b and b is equal to c, then that tells us that a is equal to c. <clears throat> yeah, math equals magic equals friendship. Yep. Yep. So now, on a higher level, transitivity is a notion which is this, saying that something will follow this. Because there are things that are transitive and things that are not. For example, A is greater than B, B is greater than C, is does tell us that A must also be greater than C. Although this is a little bit strange, this is a little bit confusing, but it does not tell us in necessarily, uh, or if we had it the other way around, B is less than C, that doesn't really tell us much. So there's a lot of weird things going on here. And of course, I'm kind of trying to keep it in terms of things that uh, people will have seen. I like people, peeps be like, you never use math IRL, but you literally use it all the time. And everything in your life is affected by other people who use math. I'm no good at number, but people who is make monkey life easier. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I think yeah. it's okay. I understand why people say you never use math IRL. I, you're right, though. They are using math. They're just not thinking about it as math. Every time they do mm. basically anything, they're doing math. Every time you you set a time for something, you're doing math, right? You decide that you're going to do something at this time. You're, you're using math. But I understand that that's sort of s s cognitively different than math, and that's fine. I, I won't begrudge people who feel like they don't use math in their day-to-day -day mm. lives because I think, you know, it's fine if they don't want to. But, uh, Yo, I definitely use math when I wake up at like five in the morning, and I'm like, "All right, how how much you know how much more time can right. I sleep until I need to shower, until I need to get to work, and you know, until I need to right. drive to get to work? How long do I you know need to drive to get to work? I calculate all that in my half sleepy. <laughs> I do math as soon as I wake up. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> well, we use math every day, but we definitely do not do calculus and trig in our daily lives. So, oh yeah, yes, <laughs> no, and no. This is what I, this is the kind of weird thing about it. You don't do you don't actively do any of that stuff in your daily lives, but I would argue most people probably do use it in their daily lives just without thinking about it. And this gets back to what we were 
I was kind of thinking about where, or talking about where, you don't think about it as math. Anytime you catch a ball, anytime you catch a falling object or 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 see something falling and figure out where it's going to land, you're using math, especially calculus, actually. <laughs> anytime you determine, or anytime you see a moving thing and you figure out where it's going to hit, you're using you're using math. But you're not thinking about it as math. You're just thinking about it as using your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I guess not physically or mentally calculating. Right, you're not doing calculations. Numbers, right, but you. But yeah, that's what, that's what the you, thing that's weird about yeah. it. You're not actually. You're not like doing math calculations, but your your brain is actually using math just just intuitively there. Yeah, I thought the same thing when I played Pokemon. It was amazing me being eight years old and figure out that this this is just a big math game. Okay, yeah, that's true. Pokemon is like ninety percent math. This is one hundred percent true. Like accuracy and all that. Yep. Like when you hear me on my Pokemon streams, I just sit there and say numbers over and I go over. I go, okay, if we have this and this, <laughs> we end up at eight times, and then we're like, <laughs> that's, that's all I'm doing. When, no, I, I mean yes, but also when you. When you watch Chameleon and any of his streams, he's really always true. Talk, I mean, not always, but he not every wrong. now and then he would talk about math. Whether he's playing Hades or Elden Ring, he would he would calculate out the stats of yep. each uh, item and how much uh, yeah, how much of a difference it's gonna make. Like I go, I, oh, this will yep. be three like, percent increase. This is a four yeah. percent increase. I guess I should go with this one. Yeah, like what will be the best. <laughs> but yeah, isn't that he, physics? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're right that that is physics. But if you ask a mathematician, they'll tell you that physics is math. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I think head math feels less like math because school forces you to show your work and if I don't show work I feel like it's just thinking right and I think this is what I was saying where I think that's reasonable I don't think that's a bad way to feel about it I totally understand the people who don't aren't into actually doing math but um, and even if, even when people say they don't use math and math in their day to day life I, I wouldn't I would not really argue with them because I think realistically for, for all intents and purposes they're, if that's how they feel then that's more or less correct, right? Because it is it is sort of different than than using math in the sense that you you're taught in school. I love numbers so much. Can, yeah. can figure out how to bring math into anything. Yeah, this is yeah. true. I was just thinking. I I find it funny how just like um actually it was probably like two or so hours ago, but I'm I'm like. You know, I'm I'm a little bit drunk playing. Uh, actually, I was mostly just chatting with my streamers mm -hmm. with the, with the chat and yeah. playing Age of Empires <laughs> occasionally. Yeah, play, and then I'm in over between. here like, yeah, <laughs> and then I'm over here like, all right, serious math time and talking about math. Yeah, <laughs> like the duality of right, right. content. Yep, yep. Let's see. <laughs> kind of excited to learn how the next problem. Okay, so well, maybe on that note, let's move on to the next problem. You're talking about number yes, seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, this actually, this gets back to what I was talking about. Okay, I realized now in retrospect, I didn't need to be doing the example that I was doing. This is the example. I forgot mm -hmm. that I had this. So, okay, oh, let's see. Question. Let's look at what you did here, okay? <laughs> For number so we have seven? three, yeah, times three Z squared mm -hmm. plus one is equal to two. You got it over here. You multiplied it through, I think. Probably, okay. Oh, I, hold on. I got to extend my canvas. Uh, <laughs> I wrote everywhere. Yeah, I think it's a squared one. Yeah, the the boxed in one uh, i'm see. pretty sure i use well i use the pemdas and i wrote down foil because i think we i also use a foil like unwrapping the burrito method or whatever yeah, yeah i've heard whatever lots of different teacher... right right okay here we are <laughs> whatever my teacher called it <laughs> yep so you ended up with 9z squared plus 3 is equal to 2 perfect 9z squared yes. uh is equal to negative 1 great great 9z yeah, squared I got it. Correct. so far so good Oh, uh, that, that's not the answer. Okay. No. I thought that was the answer. I you got z squared is equal to negative one ninth. Okay, so this point. Oh wait, I continued. At this point, you're uh, great. This is exactly right so far. Great. Perfect. Now, where you've made your mistake here, I think, <laughs> is that is what Nine we were talking about. MZ. Where what is yeah. z squared equal to negative <clears throat> uh, one ninth? How do you get that right? So much math that Yoko's frozen in place. Yeah, it's just a PNG. We didn't set up a way for, for her to be moving here, unfortunately. Maybe oh. next time. <laughs> um, yeah. And so this gets back to the the thing we were talking about with imaginary numbers. So if 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 i squared is equal to negative one, you can imagine one and one third squared is equal to one ninth. 
So then if we want negative one ninth, we just have to combine the two. So the answer is actually I over three or uh, I imaginary number. Yeah, I or you could if you want, if it's easier, you can call it one third times I. Those are the same. I, I like a fancy uh, mirrored J. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's how you. Is that's that how you, you write? That's how you learn to write numbers? it to, in uh, in math. You write it as a script okay. I, or as like a I just to just to uh, just to make it to, to like differentiate it from uh, just number like one. Th the number one exactly. <laughs> I. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get to the imaginary numbers in high school or yeah, college or whatever. Most people so. don't. If you don't go into math, you don't usually see that kind of thing. Definitely, okay. uh, definitely a perishable skill that be, should be pushed more in schools because simple math can get you through life, but societal progress requires a proficiency in it, and the school system, at least in America, is failing its kids' future. Yeah, I think I definitely have a lot of opinions on math education. <laughs> I Right, I think there's a lot of things that could be done differently. Uh, hmm. But at the same time, you know, it can be hard because the hmm. weird thing about math is it's like you kind of... There's like a lot of different things that are encompassed by math, which are separate. And we sort of set it up as though they're like, you need one to do the other. And in a lot of cases you do, but then in a lot of cases you don't. And it gets very muddled and people will get confused about what they need to know and what's important and what's not important. And uh, mm. they lose a lot of, they lose track of a lot I... of things. Square root of, neg of, ne of a negative is equal to I? Yes. So that's the one of the things... We call it I, and this is one of the things we're talking about. This is something, if you ever learn complex numbers or imaginary numbers, that's what we're talking about here. Let me use the restroom real quick. Okay, go for it. Yeah, I'll just keep rambling about this. Now, here's something interesting. You might ask then, but what is the square root of I, right? What is the square root of I? That's a good question, right? How do we get I? How would we get this number if we wanted to square something to get I? And it's kind of an interesting result. So there's a few ways to do this. As I talked about, we have the complex plane. And in fact, multiplication on the complex plane uh, is kind of an interesting operation where you add the angles and then you multiply the distance. I'm not gonna go too in deep into that, but I is right here. And that suggests to us the answer it should be somewhere over here. And in fact, I believe what it should end up being is, uh, well, it could be either one, I guess, but it should be, let's see, root two plus root two I. Are you a teacher or just a lover of math? Uh, I have multiple degrees in math, so I'll say that much. I am not currently teaching math uh, for what it's worth. I have at times been in teaching roles for math, but I do have, I do have a graduate degree in math. Yeah, for anyone who, who is wondering. So if we take square root two plus root two i and we square this, I think we should end up where we need to be, which is uh, root two squared plus two times root two i. This is not right. It should be root one over, it should be root, it should be one half. But wait. Two tubes, oh, it's two times root two squared. <laughs> I did the wrong thing. It's uh, cause it should be two times two, that's four. That's the wrong way. It should be two, it should be square root one half. Uh, my, I'm kind of, my numbers might be out of whack here, uh, to be honest. So if I've botched some numbers, don't, don't stress too much about it. The idea, the important part is after we add all this up, we end up at, uh, one half plus two times one half I plus, uh, one half times I squared which is equal to, this part is equal to negative one half, that combines with that to give zero, which leaves us with just two over two i, 
which is i. So we can actually get the square root of i as another complex number, which is kind of an interesting thing. So by just by adding i and allowing ourselves to add them together with other things, we've actually created a place where we can take the square root of any number. And this is true for any other number. You can keep taking square roots of any of these numbers and you'll get an answer. Whereas before, that wasn't something we could do, right? Negative one, we could not take a square root of until we added i. So that is one of the reasons that imaginary numbers and complex numbers are so uh, useful for math because they create they allow us to create this environment that to work in where every number has a square root which you know as mentioned is useful for reasons beyond uh, just you know quadratic solutions but in general it's very helpful to know that you can take a root and get an answer and that's uh, why we why we use this uh, the complex field Wait, I am back okay welcome back yeah, so your answer here, negative 1 over 9 squared, is an interesting, is, it's, you had the right idea, it's just that you got, you got stuck at the point, which was the point that you were at something you didn't know. And so that's totally understandable. Oh, uh, okay. And actually, yeah. uh, you know, you had the right idea. But yeah, so the answer here ends up being, what did I say? Uh, I over 3, right? Yeah. Plus, or plus or minus imaginary numbers. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next problem, next set now. They should make it more fun, in my opinion, like what you, what you all are doing now or something like how Assassin's Creed got me into history. Yeah, I agree. Aww. I think the difficulty is that doing things that are fun can sometimes... Well, for one, it being fun is sometimes difficult to... Uh, create in an environment like school because there's a lot of times where you really need to focus on tests and things like that and like so they need to have certain information and it can be difficult but I think the goal for most teachers at least teachers who want their students to enjoy the subject is to make it fun but it's sometimes easier said than done because you have to meet certain requirements <laughs> yeah. yep it's also a lot of work <laughs> right, that too. I mean, I mean to absolutely. prepare like activities yes. and you know game boards or whatever you. I mean, if we had all the time in the world and you know we got paid a lot more than we <laughs> normally do, right, right. yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll put in <laughs> yeah. the extra effort right. to make an entire <laughs> board game for my you know <laughs> for students or whatever a video game. Sure, <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Pay, you know, a bunch. I, I, that's something I, I would love to do. Right, but, totally. You know, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah, Personal, I agree. Every, every, I'm at home. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the worst part. Is it's a lot of work that often you end up having to do off hours. At home. Yeah. Yeah, but you like, don't get paid for it. It's like I have more homework than the students now. <laughs> <laughs> for real, I do more stuff. At yeah. Home than the students. Oh my goodness, do, having like, to do like grading class. and stuff. It's like it's it's like yeah. I'm doing I'm doing the homework, but like twenty times. <laughs> <laughs> yep. For all of your classes, right. all of your students. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Okay, I remember my math homework looking like this with random scribbles and a circled answer. Who knows how <laughs> I got there? Right, right. As long as you circle the answer, you're good. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Put okay. a little arrow to the number, I guess. <laughs> All right, what are the areas of the following ships? shapes? We got this rectangle. Perfect. Six. You oh, yeah, got this, yeah, right? Yeah. Two times, times two three. Times two. Perfect. Yep. All right. Uh, length times width. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What did I say? Yeah, two times. Yeah, yeah. Two, length, length times width, right? Or width times yep. height, however you want to describe it. Yep. Good. B. This one, I think uh, one of my of her number for the B. I think one of my um, my uh, chatters, my viewers had helped me with the formula, but I think I had kind of remembered what I needed to mm -hmm. do as well. Anyways, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that is a good idea, which mm -hmm. actually is you do need that to find the solution. Is it wrong? <laughs> but this is not quite right. No. Oh my goodness! That was correct. <laughs> Um, I was like, yo, one of my smart uh, chatters right. had helped me. So my here's, viewers. if you want an intuition real quick about how we might see that this <laughs> doesn't quite add up the way we, we would hope it would. If I had a square with side length two, right? Uh, uh -huh. A square. This, this whole triangle should fit inside this square, right? Wait. You, if I drew a square, so this is a triangle has side length two, right? Uh -huh. If I drew a square like, yeah. where the side length is two, the whole triangle uh -huh. should fit inside, right? Because this is a, this triangle will be smaller than the square overall. Probably, yes. Right, because this, this bottom side will match, and then the other sides will right. not go all the way up. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is the area of this square? 
Would it be the square minus minus the the triangle times two? No, I just mean <laughs> overall. Like what's the triangle? the whole square? What's this whole square? What's the area? Oh, that would be that would be four. That would be four, right? Exactly. So the triangle should have a smaller area, right? Three. Then four, correct? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had six. Yes. Right. How do I get sixteen? No, no yeah. I, this is just a this is just a, a nice way to to check your like intuition here, right? Is to say, oh, okay, uh, so. Something must have gone wrong. I, the Pythagorean right. theorem is going oh, to be useful. Right. So, uh, but not for this. This is not Pythagorean. Yeah, wait, Pythi Pythagorean t theorem. That's when you have like a triangle, but you, but you wait. It's a right triangle, so a squared but plus it's b a, squared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or like an obtuse triangle. Uh, or, I mean, only, ob obtuse, only uh, for a right triangle. Something. Oh, is it only for a right triangle? Yes. Pythagorean. Yes. Oh, so Pythagoras you can see a triangle like this. It's exactly this situation. You have a right triangle. A squared plus oh, B squared okay. is equal to C squared. Okay, but for this one here... Okay. Okay, but you have so, you have mm. drawn the start uh -huh. of a right triangle here. So you yes. are on the right idea, right? If you do this... There is one... There are, there are two right triangles in connected. that one triangle. Yep, yep. Uh-huh. So, the... so that means... That means... Four times... One with wait, cause that's two, but divide so four so, yeah. times one. So this is where it gets tricky. Oh, so four one two. Four mm, one. Not quite. Two. Let's let's okay. uh <laughs> let's think uh, let's uh let's think about something here. So you said two. What is the two that you're referencing? The one on the very wait the the one on the side the C. P C here right two C is here. So Good. Two times two. So this is two. Be four. We don't. What's I will tell you. We don't. We only know the length of one other side here. Pythagorean sounds like a monster hunter monster. <laughs> <laughs> Pythagorean. Yeah. So we know well, there one was other. There actually a huge uh, snake or a huge um. What, what's the Mexican like? Quetzal. Quetzal. Quetzalcoatl. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a Quetzalcoatl. I thought Quetzalcoatl was like a bird. Oh, it's like a bird. It's like a flying snake, right? Yeah, like a serpent, yeah, I like, think. Uh, yeah. There was one of those in uh, one of the Monster Hunter games, maybe more than the one. And it was like, it was super, I, I liked it. I, it was cute, and I loved fighting it. <laughs> I like, I like, like snakes. Snakes are my favorite back. animal, so. Yo, not not uh, chameleons? No, actually, no, <laughs> not, not chameleons. Yeah, I, chameleons <laughs> are cool, but snakes are actually my favorite. <laughs> okay, so, so two would be the C, right? So two is the C, and we know one other side. I will tell you, it's not it's not the four. <laughs> the other side would be the two. The which bottom would... here. How long is this side? Yeah. The two. The two would actually be a one, right? Yeah. You break it in half. Exactly. Yeah. So this is so like the one. One, and two. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then a four. Oh shoot! So that's the four that I had written in. So that's yes. not actually. Yeah. That's ignore not that. Actually, four. Right. <laughs> ignore the four. Yeah. That's that's my that's that's me. But this is exactly where we use Pytha the Pythagorean mm -hmm. theorem. Because okay. this is A and this is C, right? So A squared plus B squared equals C squared would be 1 times 1 plus B squared equals to 4. Yep. So 1 plus... So one, 1 plus blank equals to 4. 1 plus 3 equals to 4. So would B be 1.5? Okay, you're getting close. I'm doing my math. So, so we have I'm doing one ma mental math. If you if, if if you check this right, we have one plus b squared is equal to four now, right? That's where we were. Uh huh. Wait. Sorry. Let me let me get to. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Huh? You have b you have b squared equals to three. <laughs> you should have given oh. her a right triangle first. I mean, maybe I was. This is just supposed <laughs> to be advancing in difficulty. <laughs> yeah. So you have a uh, one plus Gaffle b squared me, equals to please. four, right? <laughs> no. So, and by the same me methods you've used before, b squared then is equal to 3, right? So b squared, yeah, because you minus so a 1 on one side. Exactly. So b, so b squared equals to 3, so something times something equals to 3. Wouldn't that be 1.5? Unfortunately, times no. Because, yeah, I, right, you've just, you've just pointed out the reason why. Because 1.5 times 2 is equal to 3, right? Not 1.5 times yes. itself. Oh, times itself. Yeah. So you would un... You would... I you un square. I'll square give you a hint. Three. Yeah, the answer is square root three. That does square not have. Three, yeah, yeah, that is yes. the answer. There is no. You cannot and write that as. That a, is. You can't write that as an as a number that ends. You would have to write forever. Right. So. It was right. Right. There's mm -hmm. like a point. Whatever. 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 Exactly. And so it's that's irrational. Okay. It goes on endlessly without ever repeating. So. Uh, yeah. 
So there we go. B squared is equal to square root 3. So we have this triangle now. So now here's where oh, wait, we get back. It, mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be B equals the square root of 3? Yes, exactly. Okay, so not B squared. It would just be B. Sorry, you are correct. Yes, thank you. Thank you for correcting Yo, I that. corrected? Yeah, yeah. I corrected yeah. the math major. Nailed it, nailed it. <laughs> Yeah, so B nice, is equal to nice. square root 3. You're just testing three. me. Yeah, it's just a test. No, no, yeah. <laughs> You're just testing me. Um, yeah, so now we have our triangle, right? 1, square root 3, 2. So how do you find the area of this triangle? Um, that's probably as far as my smarts goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do I find an uh, area of a triangle? Wouldn't it be... Um, I mean, is do we still not use the... <laughs> So I'll actually... Sorry, Art just said uh, Brie is screaming yeah. at the screen right now. Or because of me being dumb. <laughs> no, this is... How do I find the area of a triangle? This is primo <laughs> learning. I'm all about this. Primo. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I'm learning from this. So let's uh let's do something mm. fun here. Let's take this triangle we have over here. I'm going to copy it mm -hmm. over here. I complete... I like, if you ask me what's a triangle... Uh, what's, what's the area of a circle, I can give you a... I mean, we'll get there eventually, mm -hmm. I guess. Triangle. I thought it would be one side times the other side to the to the square root of something. Like, you multiply something by two. It's actually... Ooh, that's cool. I mean, you're getting closer. This is actually simpler than I think you're uh, mm -hmm. thinking it is. If we have this triangle, it's mm -hmm. a right triangle, right? Yeah. If I just copy it and rotate it, I can draw it here, right? Because it's oh, the same triangle. I just am flipping it around. Yeah, to make a rectangle. A rectangle, mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> and what's the area of this rectangle? Yeah. Uh, uh, square root of three mm -hmm. is the area. Of this rectangle. So the area of the triangle would just be that <clears throat> cut in half, right? Times two. Divided so by two. So it'll be the square root of three divided by two. Exactly. <clears throat> so that's this small triangle. But actually, this is where it gets a little bit funny is that we actually have two halves of it, so we could just leave it as square root 3 here. Now, in a more general sense, uh, with in general with triangles, if you have any triangle, okay, if you have the length of one of the sides, and... Uh, I'll use W. And the height of the triangle with a right angle here... Uh-huh. The area is just going to be W times H over 2. That W time... Oh, wait. The width times height... Divided by 2. H over 2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you can do the same thing. You can draw an extra half of this right triangle and then an extra right triangle here. And now we just have width times height and you cut off those other halves and you end up at W H over 2. Any thoughts? Um, I'm kind of blanking out. That's okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the, the important thing is you understand you've got this rectangle width here, right? Times, okay, hold on. With times height divide, uh, over 2. So, <clears throat> and that's for the whole thing, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, let's, let's go back to the rectangle. Mm-hmm. So you know the rectangle here, the area the of this rectangle right is width times height, right? Yes. Uh, if you oh yeah, I, I think if, if you look at the screen share, you'll see or something. Uh, if you have this rectangle, the area is width times height. But now imagine mm -hmm. breaking it into two pieces along this height line that I've drawn. Over here we have one okay. rectangle. Uh huh. And over here we have a second rectangle, right? Uh huh. And, One is smaller than the other. Right, and that's fine. But if we took, if we, we'll notice this line that's drawing the triangle cuts this first rectangle in half, right? Exactly in half. Mm -hmm. And this line cuts this other triangle exactly in half, right? Or cuts the yes. other rectangle exactly in half. So the area uh -huh. of our triangle that I've drawn here should be exactly half of the area of the rectangle. Because each of the smaller rectangles got cut in half. To make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Yeah, it, I'm trying to recover from my other stream, but yes. No, no, yeah, no problem. <laughs> so it's cut in, so cut in half, cut in half, and I can see that there are four time there. The, the four triangles. Yeah, there's four triangles, but um, we only need two of them, right? Yes, we do. So the area so of the we rectangle. So would <laughs> divided by uh, would it be like over four, like a fraction of four? You would multiply it by just, a fraction of four. Just by two, right? Because we're taking half of the triangles. Right. Yeah, so yes, W times H them. over 2. So that's that's just how we get that same formula. Uh-huh. Yeah, so in this case, the area of this triangle, this bottom edge, the width is 2. And the height is square root 3. Mm -hmm. And so the overall area is 2 times square root 3 divided by 2. So that's just square root of 3. Kind of an kind of a tricky answer because it's not a nice round number. <laughs> right, because you yeah, because those the two and the two goes away. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> All right, great triangles covered. Let's <laughs> cover this shape. Out of curiosity, do you know the name for this shape? <laughs> it's kind of a donut. I, a donut. That's a, <laughs> a donut. I will say this much: donut <clears throat> is actually a very common mathematical object in one of the areas of math that i studied the most of which is topology <laughs> but it's actually not it's not this uh -huh. it's a three it's a yeah. it's a larger object that is fully shaped like a donut in 3d and we don't actually fully it's called a torus <laughs> uh, oh okay yeah. i feel like in my 3d modeling program the, oh yeah the blender uh -huh. maybe they call it torus yeah I, I don't they, they, they would because that's the name of the that's the geometric name Jiggly for puff it. from above Jiggly puff from um, above, way, classic <laughs> Classic. Oh, Fennec was saying, man, I could never be a teacher. Yo, is that after you see how much patience Camemeline has for me? <laughs> it's like, yo, I could never teach someone like Lyoko over here. Taurus, what a Gemini I, shape. I don't that. Blame you. <laughs> All right. Gemini shape. Yeah. So if, if it, <laughs> that's a, I mean, I respect that pun. But for anyone who's curious, Taurus in math is spelled T O R U S. So that's the way to differentiate it from the okay. astrological Taurus. See but, if I, I'll see if it shows up on Blender. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So in this case, this two-dimensional shape, though, we, we would call an annulus. Okay. Annulus. <laughs> Can you spell that in the chat? Yeah. A-N-N-U-L-U-S. It's, it's a Pokeball. It's a, yeah. Who's that Pokemon? Yep. Yeah. So an annulus specifically mm -hmm. means a, a circle with another circle cut out of it. A cent, another circle cut out at the center, specifically. So it's like, it's this, it's this like, you know... Saturn's ring shape. <laughs> but anyways, did you get the area? I think you might have got... Wait, let me see if you got this one. I think I circled it somewhere. Pi, you do have... <laughs> you have pi r squared? Great. A equals pi r oh, squared. Great. Perfect. So what is pi... What is r here? You were... Okay. So I think you... That's the... So pi r squared is the area. Somewhere. Annulus is the donut. Annulus is like a donut if you squish it all the way until it's flat. <laughs> until it's two-dimensional. So if you take a, if you put a donut in a hydraulic press, that's an annulus. But yeah, so uh, pi r squared is the area for a uh, circle, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, so sorry. I I was checking um the Blender, the three D modeling program, uh -huh. and yes, the donut thing is called a torus. T o r u s. Yep. I did not notice that because I, I didn't get to watch that uh, hour-long donut-making 3D <laughs> YouTube video. I'll <laughs> donut, get to that at some donut point. Donut-making 3D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's every, uh, apparently everyone who does 3D modeling watches that and makes a donut as a, like a sprinkled yeah, donut. Yeah, sprinkled donut. You know, That's funny. As a, <laughs> as a uh, tutorial. Anyways. Well, hey, just make a coffee <clears> mug <throat> and you're good. Hey, that's a topology Yo. joke. Yes. It's the is same thing. Yeah, and topology, the joke for topology is that a donut and a coffee mug are the, are the same thing. <laughs> that doesn't I make, didn't take topology no, class. No, no, <laughs> that's that is that is like graduate level math. So most people don't don't know topology or if they know topology that's the joke that they know. I won't oh, okay. <laughs> I won't I won't bore everyone with it, but the short answer is that topology in topology shapes are very flexible. So the shape a tor a donut and a coffee mug both have one hole in them, right? The coffee mug has the handle, the donut has the hole. So by, oh, yeah. just by moving stuff around, they are basically the same. And the topologist says, close enough. 
sure. Yeah. Okay, anyway. <laughs> One of them's tastier than the other. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Pyre Square is the area for a circle. And so now we uh, see we have two, a circle here. This big circle has radius 5. So that will have 25 pi area, right? Do you agree with that? 5 squared pi. Oh, wait, are you asking me yeah. a question? So oh, if, okay. I, if I were I mean, to talk about this whole big circle, that'd be 25 pi, right? I'm trying to figure out what I had written and where I had yeah. written it on the... I like, good luck for you figuring everything think, out. I'm like, uh... I think you have pi squared here, and you wrote I part yes. of... I think you ended up with 100 pi. And I think... A is pi times 100. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what I did. And I think but then you, when I move the decimal point to over, then A is equal to 314. But it has a whole bunch of other numbers yes. after it because pi is a never-ending whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's irrational. Yep. Yeah. Irrational. Yeah, that's an, it's irrational. It just never ends. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think what you did here is you multiplied 2 and 5 to get 10, right? Uh, because those are the two numbers here. Yeah. Two and five. Yeah, there's two and so um shoot, what did I write? Pi r squared equals to the area. Mm -hmm. So the radius would be uh the the Oh, because you said because it's okay. <clears throat> yeah, go go ahead. What I do the radius is five I, times I, two. I, I forgot what I had written. Is it five times two? You you have ten, which is, is probably because you had five and then you doubled it to get across the circle, right? Okay, yeah, but then again, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, but the two in the or the the four or whatever in the center, uh -huh. that should be minus the by the ten, yeah, because it's a, it's a it's a negative space. Yes, exactly. You need to remove it that. It shouldn't be part of the area. Yes. That's what, okay. I didn't do that in the. You're I didn't exactly do that right. in math. Now I now I get it though. And I will. So that means ten minus four would be six. So it'd be okay. I'm gonna cut you off there. Times... I'm gonna cut you off there because uh -huh. you're that's there's a you're making. Two small mistakes here along the way. Okay. So first, the first one is actually the radius here is five. So the diameter oh. is all the way across. The radius is from the center oh. outward. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the radius here should be five for the big one. So the radius is from the center outward? Yes. From the center of the negative white space? Yeah, from the center of wherever that circle would be mm. centered. So that means it'll be five minus two, right? Okay, good. So it'll be three. So now here's your other thing to be careful of. You don't subtract the radius. You just subtract them after the fact, <laughs> right? Because this is this smaller circle is just its own circle, right? Uh -huh. In a way, you have to think the outer circle or the, the outer circle. If you're just calculating the area of the outer circle, it doesn't know that part of it got cut out, right? It's just a big circle. So the, right. The, I mean, I would if I saw a donut versus a jelly filled <laughs> whatever. Right. I would know the difference. Yeah. Between the two. But the but here's or well, I guess maybe we'll we'll go through it explicitly if okay. you get if so you do, do we just mm -hmm. uh -huh. if you do five minus two that's three right so yeah three squared mm -hmm. three pi r pi pi uh, three r three pi squared mm -hmm. or pi three times three squared radius. yeah so you pi get times oh sure mm -hmm. <laughs> you get pi nine pi right pi times nine Oh, that's right. Pi r squared. Why did I write it the other way? Anyways, whatever. So it'll be, if I were to solve it the way I would mm -hmm. with my new knowledge, it, yeah, uh, 3 pi r squared. So pi, so 3 times 3 would be 9. So it'd be 3.14 something, something, something. You just, yeah, you can nine. just leave it as pi. Most people will just leave it as pi. 9 pi. Yeah, no, 9, nine pi. pi. Exactly. So that's now. Yo, one donut turned into 9 pies. <laughs> if only. <laughs> Yo, this, alchemy. This is math alchemy. Right. This is why you guys learn math. You can turn a donut into nine pies. So now I will say here's the other way to think about it, which I will say before we don't before you get too uh before you memorize this answer, let's uh it's wrong. <laughs> let's uh take a step back. So that, this five <laughs> squared, if if we were just looking at the big circle, imagine this big circle without a hole cut out of it. Imagine right. okay, because we're gonna do the we're gonna subtract the we're gonna cut out the the hole from the donut later on. Yeah, after the, exactly. The Let's area. do that after. Now. Right, right. So if we start with the big circle, uh, oh. <clears throat> the area is. I was gonna say hi, game, game, uh, Gamera Obscura. Yo, welcome back. Oh, hey, Gamera. Regular here, yeah. Yeah, he's a regular. Yo, sup, sup. What's up? Says, uh, this is great. Whose idea was it? 
I think I had asked my followers on Twitter, hey, yo, is anyone good at, or does anyone want to give me some math or science or whatever yeah, questions? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I want to I do them on uh, my stream. And then uh, Kevin Million had uh, typed out this entire math page, um, which we're going through right now. Yeah. But um, I had solved, you see all the blue markings? All the blue, That's yep. me. That's my attempts at <laughs> figuring out the problems without looking up anything on Google. I think I had some people on my chat yeah. try to help me. Mm -hmm on my stream like a month ago or something and so now he's trying to correct or teach me the yeah. right ways to do the ones that i did incorrectly <laughs> yeah and even the ones you we're did correctly all, just learning. talking through it yeah we're all learning but we're yeah learning. you have uh, i think this was like bef before we had talked much too this was just like <laughs> this was like a while back i was just like oh you know i could send you some problems you're like oh sure yeah. <laughs> so i just wrote up a bolt whole sheet <laughs> yep okay so let's, the area of the big circle without anything cut out of it would be five, pi times five squared, right? Because the radius would be five. Oh, right, that's right. We're doing this with, with the whole thing yeah, in mind. just do the whole thing Which first. would be the five, yeah. So pi, uh, uh, pi r squared, so it'll be five times five, which is 25 pi. Great. Which you have there. Yep. 25 pi. Perfect, I can read. Now, what's if, now if we're going to cut out a small square, what's the uh, small square going to be? Well, why are we one? cutting out a square from the donut? Oh, sorry, Who does small, that? sorry, you're right. Small circle. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, good, good catch. If we're going to cut out a small circle, we kept saying R what squared, psychopath. and my brain went into square. <laughs> what psychopath takes a square cut, like a cookie cutter, and goes into a donut? I love math. Are we okay. trying to figure out the area of the yeah. circle minus the whole? Yeah, the annulus. I won't try to help yes. or anything. I'm just curious because I just hopped in. I mean, <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna confirm that you know the answers, that's totally fine. I, I will, as oh, I just yeah, mentioned, yeah. I, uh, I've I have really all the answers. This. So, <laughs> yeah, I've already I wrote done it. This. Yeah, he, yeah. He's just trying to help me yeah. figure out where I went wrong. So it's no problem so if you wanna if we shout were to out cut answers. It out, mm -hmm. That means we would do the pi r squared method with the two. Spoilers. So it'll be pi r spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> pi r squared so it'll be two times two is four, four pi yep so the small square so you minus four pi from the 25 pi so that'll be four four minus 25 which is 21 yeah 21 pi 21 pi exactly <clears throat> and that is in fact the answer so you can see you get different answers which <laughs> depending on if you do it right or wrong <laughs> well depending on i mean i think the thing is your intuition what you were thinking actually is a reasonable thing and a lot of students will do this uh, they'll subtract the radius first, thinking it'll be the same. Uh, but mm. it won't. And here's sort of an oh. illustration that can help us see this. It's a huge difference. This... I'd rather have 21 pies than 9 pies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if we draw, if you draw a circle with radius 3, that would have that area 9 pi, right? Because the radius here is 3. So that's a completely different shape. And there's no reason to expect that this is going to be the same. And in fact, it probably won't be because you can see that an area, a circle of radius three would be, uh, would fit like entirely here, right? Because this distance here is three. Or actually, no, sorry, radius, uh -huh. radius three. So it would be go to here. It'd be like, it would be a circle like this. So you can kind of imagine it doesn't really fill the space fully, right? Mm. So... The, the short answer is basically that these two numbers, because of the way squares work, they don't end up being the same, even though a lot of students want it to be the same because it's easier. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. But yeah, great. Yeah, 21 pi. You ended up, you got it. You got there. All right. And now we got to the, get to the stuff that uh, have X's. <laughs> 4 a.m. I'm learning math. My brain is sharp. 6 a.m. Yeah. for me. <laughs> I just woke up getting yo, ready, all these ready for people, school. Yeah. It's like 3, 4, 6 a.m. for y'all, and you're all like, yo, I'm going to wake up to some math streams. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My regulars are the homies. They <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they show up at 4 a.m. at 6 a.m. 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> this Wait, is how Pizza Shop Stories are to screw you. Is this you. Trig? This is not Trig. The next ones are Trig, the ones that you have X'd out. Oh, shoot. Oh, this is how pizza shops That's try to screw you. You think, oh, the pizza's only a few inches smaller, but it can be a huge difference in actual pizza. Yes, this is literally true. I, okay, this okay, this came up in a podcast I was listening to because they were reviewing, like, some place had a, like, 60 or some... They had, like, a, a giant... Some huge pizza 
right? And they were charging four times the price of a smaller pizza because the, it was so much, it looked like it was a big thing. And they're like, oh, it's so much pizza. But actually, it was like four times the price and the amount of pizza you get is like double if you actually do the area. And it was like, or it was like, or it was something like that. Like you could get smaller pizzas. It was only, yeah. Uh, it was only double the size. Right. And it would cost it like three more. or four times as much okay. money or something. <laughs> so it was I like. Mean, uh, capitalism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of wild, though, because you have, like, the this area of the pizza depends on the radius, and it's with a factor of square, but, like, so the couple inches smaller has a much bigger difference than you would think, and things like that. Yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah, I got I got sidetracked by that comment. Um, yeah, okay, so the next ones are trig, uh, or these next two are trig, which, uh, so you have the next out, so I think, I assume you didn't, you didn't attempt anything else at this point, right? I think at the I think I looked at the I was like I did not line I, I did not learn a cosine mm -hmm. co whatever co co pi co yeah co co cosine I don't even know what the other ones are called yeah. and co co trine with the pi <laughs> pi, pi fraction yeah it's cotangent cotangent okay mm -hmm. I think uh, my my one of my teachers in high school had or college whatever tried to teach us about log. Mm -hmm. on your cal calculator when you press a little log button yep. i was like yo and then there was a cosine on there but <laughs> i don't think they went too far with it or maybe i just didn't learn it somehow i passed high school though so i mean this is not <laughs> this stuff is not required for most at least you know okay, american high college. schools so somehow uh, i passed college <laughs> yeah i mean depending on what you know it depends on what you're studying and things like that but this is the point at which the math not everyone necessarily learns it or if they do it's very easy to forget because it doesn't necessarily come up so very understandable. Dang, I haven't dealt with cotangents since like 2002. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I had to, I, every time I do trig, I did a trig stuff though. I have to like check to make sure it's correct. Cause I, you know, I usually just do it in Wolfram Alpha. I just plug it into a calculator. I don't actually do it by hand. <laughs> Yeah, do people do it by hand? I thought you were only Not supposed really. to use a calculator. Yeah, no, you for only. Well, some of this stuff, you. you is Like, some of these, you are just. Sit, are pretty easy because they're just pre. They're like values that are decided well by definition to some degree so for example cosine pi so there is the whole there is a way you can kind of re-derive this information out of not knowing what cosine is i don't know that i want to go into that right now because it's kind of a pain <laughs> it's not that complicated yeah, it's, but it's kind it's of a fine. pain but yeah. the answer cot cotangent of pi is uh, uh let me make sure i'm thinking this correctly should just be negative one And, uh, oh, sorry, cosine of pi should be negative one, and cotangent of pi over two should be zero? Cotangent should be, yeah, zero. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so you didn't try these other problems, right? These ones are get pretty tricky. They're no. actually not too bad. I, I can run through the yeah. tricks real quick if you want to see the interesting thing about them. I think, um... I don't even know why I underscored, uh, uh, underscored uh, what do you call it? <laughs> Under, underline derivative, and I'm like, do you just multiply the four? The don't you actually, oh, wait, that's correct. Now that I look at the, your is notes, it? yeah, no, you have the right idea here. <laughs> do I? Uh -huh. Did I write it somewhere? I don't know. Yeah. Trick and calc were invented by hand. Let that sink in. I know, right? The old school mathematicians doing this on paper. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, calc being invented by hand, I can kind of understand because you, like, approximate and then you realize that you can actually figure it out exactly. But cal trig is, like, oh, my goodness. Actually doing having tables for those numbers. Old school people had just big tables of trig values, and you had to just reference the table because you didn't have calculators. Like a, giant, like a giant cheat sheet or something? Yeah, because you, could, you, it, you can find them by doing it by hand and writing out the numbers, but obviously no one wanted to do that. So there were just big tables that had all the numbers in there, and you would just check the table. <laughs> Nowadays, yeah, calculators 12, do it. You, you include, like, some sort of fruit, and then number 13, you have, like, some sort of a musical symbol in there. Yeah, yep. <laughs> the okay. little violin thing. <laughs> so 9 and 10 are trig trigonometry. 11, mm. the 11 through 13 are calculus. So 11, okay. like you said, 3x to the 4, you just multiply the 4 down and you end up, it's just, Three. it's 12x cubed right. is the answer. <laughs> oh, wait, 12x cubed. You, you still have x cubed. So you multiply the 4 down and you reduce it by 1. So that is actually the answer. There's a much deeper explanation for why this is the case, but I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> 
you okay. you had the right what intuition I, there because I think you've probably seen oh. a little bit of this. Yeah. Pro maybe, maybe I don't know what I was gonna do mm -hmm. was three x times three x times three x times three x because that's what I think the the q or the yeah four, is that makes q? sense. It's a q. Uh, three, it's, three well, that's up to the right? fourth. There's not a name for it's just to the fourth. Okay, yeah. three is cubed and then three three plus one <laughs> or yeah. whatever. Okay, it'd be so like hypercube. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you just you just multi. It's it's a little bit weird. You you don't you just bring the four down, and this is just a property of derivatives. Uh, it's just a calculus mm. thing. Um, but yeah, okay. that's that. Hey, thanks for following, yeah, by I the way. Think, yeah, derivative. Oh, yo, yo. Yeah, yeah. So der I think derivative. I may have learned it like in college. Mm -hmm. The name, of, the word is familiar. I do not know anything beyond yeah. that. Yeah, the, the counterpart to derivative, like the opposite in a sense, it would be integral, which is what this symbol is here in number 13, the the mat, the music looking symbol. The music, the yeah. violin symbol. So 12 is a limit. The 12, it does look like, you're right. It's, it, it actually, you're right. It's like the same shape. <laughs> this is, I used to play violin when I was, when I was younger. Oh, so. really? Of course. <laughs> yeah, of yeah course. I know. Classic, right? <laughs> Classic, yep. Classic math kid it's also plays violin. Uh, yeah, yeah, violin or, or piano. piano. Yep, I, yep. I bet you play my piano si too. No, I don't, but my siblings both do or did. Okay. Including Fennec. <laughs> You've included transitive, transitive properties. Yeah. Okay, so the limit here, this is another sort of calculus thing or pre-calc, mm. uh, but the, easy, <clears throat> the easiest way to think about this is if you go to infinity, so that's infinity, the symbol there, right? Yes. You've probably so seen that. Yeah, it shows up in a lot of other things just because it's kind of a nice idea. If you go to infinity, that x squared at the bottom gets really, really, really big, right? Really fast because it's x squared. So imagine plugging in x in a number into x there. It gets squared. And the limit means you, you figure out what the thing does as the numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so in short... In this case, the bottom, the denominator here gets bigger very fast, so the limit's actually just zero. That's I'm I'm glossing over a lot. You don't need to worry about that's, it. That's that's fine. That's yeah. fine. And uh, yeah, as I was gonna say, don't don't worry too much about it. I'm just kind of glossing over for anyone who's here and is curious. <laughs> and then who's, this is an who's integral like into trigonom tri trigonometry, trigonometry, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or calc. Which one was that? I don't remember. Imagine the great inventors of the past with calculators. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be it would be wild. I mean. It's interesting because a lot of the early mathematicians are very famous for results that nowadays are proven by college students as an exercise. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, like, yeah, at the time, it was revolutionary. Yeah, and, can you imagine, I mean, like, just going back into the past, tossing I'm, the calculator <laughs> with, like, a rechargeable battery or whatever, right? Right, yeah, so it, the rechargeable ignoring, battery ignoring that issue, yeah, just giving them yeah, the just, technology, right? Yeah, and then teaching them how to use it, and then being like, "Yo, we 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 can do these cosine buttons because of you." Right. And then like, here's all the other stuff. You yeah. know, go, go have fun, go wild. Yeah. <laughs> like, how much more advanced would we be in in civilization? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if that were the case, it is kind of an interesting like thought experiment. Yeah. Okay. We would, yeah. We'd be better off, maybe, or maybe. worse off, or worse. <laughs> right. I know. Who knows? I mean, yeah. there's a lot Cyber of. Punk. There's a lot of questions about what is the biggest motivator for technological advancement, right? And uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, war. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, who knows? My only regret <laughs> from high school is not staying in the AP math classes, but I was too lazy to do the homework. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> Goes back to 2022. <laughs> the cars are flying yeah. now. <laughs> Yo, wait, Leon, we're in 2023 now. This is true. You haven't come back to the present. You came back to a year Leon, ago. Leon, what part of the world do you live uh -oh. in? What, what planet are you on? Uh, Leon secretly does have a time machine and forgot what year it was. <laughs> Leon, come back. 2023 is not that bad. Yeah, and this so last far. one, number 13, is an integral. So, uh, in short, I won't go into the details, but the answer, you get log... Uh, of 6 minus log of 2, which would be log of 3, I think. That, that's going to be, that's going to seem like nonsense to people who uh, haven't followed, who don't know calc and also don't know logarithms, but uh, the it's answer is cool. log of 3. Okay. I mean, it's kind of like most of my time when I would sit in my math classes and my teachers would kind of like, you know, go over stuff. And I'm just kind of <laughs> like, mm, hi, <laughs> whatever you say, teach. Yeah, whatever you say, if you say so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, if you say so. I believe it. <laughs> I'm going to argue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want, 
these le- these next ones are all are kind of interesting because they just have little tricks or something. I mean, some of these are a bit rough. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't, I wasn't necessarily expecting you to ant- to get these, but there are some kind of cool tricks. I do kind of want to get to the mm. word problems, which I think you didn't attempt, but they are kind of neat because no, those are I actually didn't. easier or, or easier in the I sense would, that there's I more intuition. Love- yeah, I would love to get to the word problem. Do you like my pie that I drew down there? Yeah. I don't even know what I was getting at with the. With I was the trying to understand e. this. I think you saw <laughs> this and saw a pie, and you wrote infinite yeah. pie or something. Infinite pie. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, I think that oh, was what it yes, was. Yes, I saw the. That it was. Because the product. This is so. This symbol means product, but it's a bit. It is. It is a big pie. E? It is a capital pie. Okay. Cap- yeah. Um, I was looking at the letter A for the tricky simpl- simplifications mm-hmm. and I was like yo like what I what I love trying to attempt to do is like you know finding the variable what is yeah. x what is y or whatever yeah. so I looked at it and I'm like yo I if I can do the top one I I should be able to do the bottom one as well right um so I was trying to do it and yeah, I'm it's like tricky. Mm, actually I think I talked about it, or maybe I wrote it out and then I got rid of it but I think I had attempted to do something mm-hmm. with it and I was like nah no, guys, I'm good. I'm done. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do it. I can't do this other stuff. You're right. That was the right idea, I think. I think what you're getting at. I mean, that is basi- the right idea is basically to to factor these out and find what it is. But Wait. they are kind of a pain to factor oh, out. Oh, for, for A. Okay. For A. For I a, thought you were talking a. about the pie. I'm like, no, 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 uh, yeah. I was talking about A. For A. I was talking about <laughs> yes, A. Yes, the A. So, uh, just to do this quickly, the uh, 18x cubed minus 9x squared minus 2x plus 1 Oh boy! Actually, I don't. I did not prepare myself for actually having to do this. I've I've already forgotten what it was. I think we end up with uh, should be yeah two x plus one. So there's a trick you can use here to get to factor this, but you end up with two x plus one times. Sorry, it's two x minus one. Times, uh, was that uh nine. X plus one. That looks right. No, it's also minus one. Nine <laughs> x minus one over. Oh boy, nine x minus one times. <laughs> Are you mental mathing this? Yeah. Even? No, wait, no. This is nine x plus one plus. <clears throat> no, this is minus one. This is also minus one. That makes sense. It should be minus one times. So. X minus one. Do you like foil the the X's out so that they're all the same X's? So here's the trick. Here's the trick that I'm doing in my head. Oh, I shouldn't erase that. You'll notice, here's how you can kind of, there's a trick to these, this one over here. 18X, so here we have 2X plus one, right? On the right hand side of it. We have blah, blah, Mm. blah, 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 minus 2X plus one. Uh Uh-huh. And you'll notice over here we have a similar thing, right? If I if I write this as nine times two x, and then this could oh, be we, we minus. Oh, we unfoil it. We, yeah, we can write this as minus nine times, or sorry, nine x. This should be nine x squared. Nine uh-huh. x squared times two x minus nine x squared times one. So you can actually separate the pieces out, and you end up with nine x. Uh. Oh, this should be. This one should be squared. Like I, I feel <laughs> like I've learned how to do that one. Like this, this here. It's just been so long. I didn't even remember yeah. that this existed. <laughs> I'm going to kind of shortcut it. If you fact, you can factor all these out using various tricks, which I could do. But uh-huh. I, I, I'm just, I didn't, I didn't have my notes ready for that, so I would have to redo like it. This- this this kind of math I like mm-hmm. uh, areas and such sure <laughs> um everything else well I mean you know mm-hmm. some some things are just like I've just never learned so like the letter e yeah, over there sure. I just never learned it <laughs> so I think this I think this is right I think these cancel out and this one is x squared this is x minus 3. So this one's a difference of squares. x minus 3, x plus 3. And this over here, this is just a factorization that you have to do. This becomes x plus 2, x plus 3. x plus 3's cancel. And then you need to multiply them across. Yeah. So now you end up with, if you do all this out, which is what I've just kind of glossed through and done here quickly, you end up with uh, 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 minus x minus 3 over x plus 2 
And if you multiply these across, so this just, you, you end up with some complicated thing. Okay, I mean, it becomes x plus 2 times 2x plus 1, or minus 1 over x plus 2 times x minus 1, minus blah, 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 blah. I'm kind of glossing over it. Here's the, here's the, uh, the punchline. The solution you end up with is 1. <laughs> it's 1? It's equal to 1. After all of that? Yes. It all ends up subtracting away, and you end up with one. <clears throat> yeah, like, foil and then, well, unfoiling it, I mean, you have to, like, kind of... Yeah, it's kind of a pain. You kind of... There's, yes, guess what it is. There's a lot of tricks that you learn along the way that will help, uh -huh. and you feel, you'll notice patterns that can make it easier. So, like, mm. when, if I see this, there's a lot of patterns I see mm. that make this doable, but mm. that is basically the solution, yeah. is just to kind of recognize the tricks. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so now, satisfying. Fennec was whatever. saying that's so satisfying. <laughs> yeah, when everything yeah, canceled. No, whenever, yeah, sometimes, actually a lot of the times when I was in high school and or college, I would figure out what the variable is, and whenever it's some decimal number, I'm like, yo, this is wrong. This is something went wrong. wrong. <laughs> ain't no, ain't, ain't X ever gonna be like, you know, 1.3, uh, 1.2, whatever it is, you yep, know? Like, yep. I did something wrong. Oh, I did something horribly wrong. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. But I didn't know any better. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just go, oh, well. <laughs> this is... Yeah, oh, oh, well. <laughs> this is what I got. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, here's that Somehow gets at this hint I, I had here. Here's a hint. They will end up very simple by the end. And it's so simple as one. And that should give you a hint about the rest of these. I will, spoiler alert, these are all equal to one. I, I was going to guess. I was going <laughs> to yeah. say, are these all one? Yeah, they're all equal to one through various tricks. This one uses trig identities. This one is not too bad if you remember trig identities, but obviously it's hard to remember I've them. I've never learned it. Even I don't remember yeah. them. I often have to go, wait, what's the trig identity here? And this one uses fun properties of infinite sums and products, which I won't get into because it's it's just it's kind of overwhelming, but it just ends up being one, which is kind of fun. It is kind of neat that you can end up getting one here. Mm, for all of them. Yeah, for all of them, and even though they look so ridiculous. There are yeah. some weird conditions and stuff, but that's okay. Infinite pies. All right. So now let's, uh, let me get rid of this. Like one can be anything. Kind of like how, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but black is like the, what is it? The absence of color or the combination of all color? I don't yeah. Remember. Depending on if you're using is. additive or subtractive mm. color. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <Sure>. everything adds, <laughs> adds up and cancels like out, right? Like all the colors can cancel be, out. Yeah. Yeah. Like one, one. Uh, I didn't even think about it this way. Like, one can be so many different things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, let me pull up the uh, the word problems. Because these are kind of cute. Are we going... Okay. They're, they I won't be too bad. Of, yeah. I was thinking of um, going through it at some point. Oh, if but, you, you want, know, if you, you can. Wanna, if you want to make... It's up to you. What do, what do you want to do? Uh, we we can, can go through them. We can just go... We'll just or talk about them can... now. Because I can always... Okay. Uh, yeah, if you ever want to do this again, I can I can make more problems. Yes, it's not too make bad. Me, make me more make me more <laughs> <Yeah>. word problems. <laughs> yeah, the word <laughs> problems are fun. I was I was the the I, all of this first stuff was just because it's uh, just general math, but the word problems are kind of fun, especially because they got some yeah cute tricks. Uh, I think I went through or I I briefly opened it up on my stream and I went through like the first question. I didn't I don't think I answered it, but I read through it and I was like, yo, it was about VTuber socks or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here like, we go. What was the possibility? Yeah. Here we go. I think I have it on stream now. Is it all revisible? There. White is all the colors. Okay. I'm so bad yeah. at word problems. <laughs> uh, okay. So, let's see. Let's. Here's problem one. Oh, wait. Um, I don't think it's showing up on stream. I see it on the, oh, the is Discord. It? Is it though. not? I think it Unless is. My stream is behind for me. Let, me. let me reset. I see it now. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, number one, you have a drawer full of loose socks. You've got socks in four different colors. Four red socks, six green socks, five blue socks, eight purple socks. Each sock is identical except in color, so you can only tell the difference by looking at them. You need to get dressed, but you're too tired to look before you grab socks. Uh, how many socks do you need to grab at once to guarantee that you have at least one matching pair of socks? So what do you think? This is this, These are math problems in a sense, but actually, to some degree, these are sort of just like... Uh, uh, logic yeah, like a like a this is almost just a logic problem to some degree this is something you might <laughs> see, see like a, in a puzzle you have a drawer book. full of socks you've got socks in four different colors four red socks six green socks five blue socks and eight purple socks every sock is identical except in 
color. Oh, right. Okay, size and everything. So you can only tell the yeah. difference by looking at them. You need to get dressed, but you're too tired to look before you grab socks. How many socks do you need to grab at once to guarantee that you have at least one matching pair of socks? Yeah, so here's the idea. You have a drawer full of socks, different colors, but they feel the same. So if you close uh -huh. your eyes and grab some number of socks, how many do you need to grab to be sure that you have at least one matching pair? What do you think? Let's see. There's four, six, five, and eight. Yeah. There. So the least number is four. There's four of the red ones. Yeah. Red, green, blue, eight. And then there's the most is the eight, which is eight socks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what's the smallest number? Like, so, for example, if you just grab two socks, it's actually pretty unlikely that they'll match, right? You probably get a red, yeah. you probably get a purple sock and a green sock or something. I, trick question, just bundle your socks together like a gentleman. <laughs> yeah, just grab them, just just uh, make I'm sure that gonna, they're already paired. Um, this is true. I'm going to take a uh, guess and say four because okay. there's four different colors. That's very good guess. But let's <laughs> – but for, now, say I close my eyes and grab four socks. I grab one of each color. Uh -huh. Oh, well, you're really lucky, I guess. Right, really lucky. But po that's possible, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah, you're as lucky as me getting shiny sometimes. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And Pokemon's – Yep. But now now from there, this should get you – this gets you close to the answer. So if I wanted to guarantee that I had a matching sock, how – and I've, if I've grabbed four and they, none of them matched, yeah, you just need one more, right? Because one that's more, right. you'll definitely match one of them. You'll definitely, right, yeah. right. So that's this true. is something called the pigeonhole principle. Uh, the idea of the pigeonhole principle is if you have uh, eight holes and nine pigeons, at least one of those holes has to have two pigeons, right? No matter what. If, you, if you're putting all the pigeons in holes... Mm -hmm. At least um, one of the holes got to have two two pigeons. That's um, true. Because you don't have more than five different or four different colors. Yeah. And it's possible you could end up with more than two pigeons in a hole, mm -hmm. right? You could end up with all of their mm -hmm. socks being the same color. But that yep. doesn't matter. All that matters is you have at least two that are matching. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now here's the next part. part so that's the pigeonhole principle. It shows up a lot in these like uh, math competition question, questions. Okay. They're kind of... Uh, it's, it's a something, if you understand this principle, it can be very helpful for these. So this is kind of hitting upon, like, the kind of math you would see in, like, math competitions and stuff. Although, of course, maybe a little bit simpler. Um, <laughs> That's such pigeon. a silly name and reason for the name. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it is a little bit silly. So now, part B. All right. <laughs> Wait, you're a VTuber. Everyone knows that VTubers hate socks that match because asymmetry is the way to go. Yep. Yeah. So how many socks do you need to guarantee that you have at least one pair of mismatched socks? What do you think? How many socks do you need to grab to guarantee that you have at least one pair of mismatched socks? So that would be similar to the first one, I think. Mm -hmm. If you picked four socks, there's a guarantee that you can have all the same color. Yeah, it's possible for them to all be the same you, color. Mm -hmm. it's because the least amount of socks are four, so you can technically get all the four red socks if yep. you're super, super lucky. Right. But if you get five, you're definitely going to get at least one more of the other color, right? You're on the right track, but what if they, what if all the socks you grabbed are blue? Oh, <laughs> shoot. Get out of here, blue. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm blue. <laughs> My entire motto is blue. I, oh, wear, boy. I, I actually wear blue socks. Well, you do, I think you do wear blue socks. <laughs> I do wear blue socks. My socks are dog socks, colored. You want to see my dog socks? Dog colored? Well, they have yeah, dogs on them. them. Look at them. <laughs> Look at those dog socks. <clears throat> so cute. Wait, I, I don't see them yet. Yeah, I, I think they're on actually. stream. Yeah, they'll show up. All right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, geez. I've moved my model. I don't know where I was. So, yeah. Okay. All right, so wait, wait, hold on. yeah, I'm waiting for the socks to show up. Man, this delay. Yeah, me, me, me too. Yeah, what's with the delay? Well, I, I think I it's already showed up for me. I thought it was pretty accurate, but <laughs> I don't have delay on or anything. And usually when I check, it's okay, but I oh. might just be. It's me. It's just dif oh, distance. Oh, there yeah. I, see the, I see the socks now. Oh, they are little. Is it Shiba's? I little think they are Shiba's. I don't know. You'd have to ask Fennec. He's the one that drew mm. it. <laughs> oh, okay, sweet. Fennec, are they? Uh, are they? Uh, uh bro, Shibas? what kind of dogs are they? Is he still here? <laughs> They are sheep, hey, okay. Yo, yeah. Jeeves. 
Is it Shibakin? Okay, the fact that you put that much detail on something Shibayumi. you normally don't even see is pretty awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I kind of yeah. wish I could show it off more, but it's like, I don't want to... The, the full model takes up too much space. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Fennec did some good work. Yeah. But now I know I always have dogs with me on stream, no matter what. Aww. I just wanted to make dog socks. This is... <laughs> Okay. Nice. All right, so yeah. Yeah, the, the, the chamomile flowers. Yeah, flowers for, um, in the pocket. I think when I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think when you first showed me um your model, I was like, hey, you have flowers. It took a few seconds, and I was yeah. like, oh, chamomile. The chamomiles, the yep. Flower. Yep. <laughs> that makes sense. Yep. Yo, I love, uh, I have, um, mm -hmm. when I want to, like, you know, calm down and, like, anxiety out or whatever, mm -hmm. I, I have a, like, lavender chamomile. I, I have a whole bunch of teas that I kind of mix together. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that sounds and nice. And I like it, it's it's really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Like I, I can feel my hand jitters just go away when I do that. <laughs> it's yeah. nice. I do like me some Anyways, tea. So if you take four, if I grab four socks, there's a chance that it'll always match. If I so then if I grab eight socks, mm -hmm. there might be a chance that I can all match. Yep. But if I grab nine, if if I am super lucky and get all eight purple socks, at least one of them will be different. Exactly. So it's on the other end then. So nine. Exactly. For, nine. for B. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly the reason. So you you <laughs> eight, you could still have all purple, but one more and you're good to go. So that's sort of another instance of the pigeonhole principle where now the pigeons are, or the holes are, the just the eight purple slots. And now you need nine to know mm. that you've got at least two pigeons in one hole. So mm. It's sort of like a backwards pigeonhole argument, but same concept. Great. Let's look at number two. The grand VTuber council that we must all follow, right? This the, the council that we all know about, for sure. Uh-huh. It has ten members. We all know this. It has ten members. And they need to choose six people to make a committee. So, how many ways could you make this committee? If the, the, the people in it, they don't really matter. It just needs to be six people. How many different committees could you make? <laughs> And they need to choose six people to wait. So the Grand VTuber Council. So there are ten members. The one who makes all the all the rules. All the, of the VTuber, VTuber decisions. Uh, streaming rules. Yeah. Uh, they have ten members. Yeah. And they need to choose six people out of the ten members to make a committee for a certain something. Exactly. Some committee on, uh, maybe a committee on socks. <laughs> Oh, by the way, can I have a username? Yo, I will check it in a in a bit. Oh, yeah. Um, they had, I, I think, a, uh, can I have a username? Uh, they had made me some art, I believe. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Wait, oh, did you already post it? Oh no, is it in our is it in our uh, what's up WhatsApp chat as well? Anyways, <laughs> I'll check it in a bit. Whew. I am, I am, I'm not prepared. I already know I'm not prepared for what they had drawn. Yeah. Especially if um yeah I know if it's our, anything our like uh <laughs> like <laughs> yeah everything that they have drawn for me so far <laughs> yeah it'll be something I'm sure <laughs> it'll be something we'll see, well it'll be on Twitter I'm sure yeah I'm I sure see. I will be I'm sure I will be able to see it soon <laughs> yeah um all right so so they need to they need they need uh so they I need won't to choose six people within I, the ten to make a committee I will say I don't uh, expect how... you to get the actual number here because it's kind of a pain but I, I just want to see if you can kind of get okay. the intuition here. About what you should how do. How many different ways are there to make the committee? In other words, how many different groups of six could you form out of the ten members? So the, uh, the principle at play here is something called... Uh, uh, well, this is rather than the principle. The I, subject at play here is combinatorial mathematics or combinatorics. I don't even know what that is, but yeah, it does. Okay. This reminds me of a puzzle from a Professor Layton actually yeah. I was playing. By the way, if you don't know, there's um the Professor Layton. I think the first, second, and third game on mobile. Like, yeah, I, I think I need Android to play, and iPhone. Yeah, I need to play the. I've played some of them, but I haven't played. I don't think I've even played all of them, so I need to go do that at some point. I haven't either. <laughs> um, I played Professor Layton, the first, second, and third game on the DS, and I don't know if it came out on the 3DS. Oh, there was one that came out on the 3DS. Actually, there's a few that came out on the 3DS. Yeah, I remember um, Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton came out. I played part of that, but then I, I didn't, because uh, I love Phoenix Wright. I didn't Wright. play that one. <laughs> There, yeah, there was a few. I played the one with, like, the Loch Ness Monster or whatever, and uh, 
that's when like the next trilogy came out or whatever mm-hmm. the prequels anyways you get the, th- the three on the mobile um they should also be sponsoring yeah, it I because that. i bring that up like every now and then <laughs> <laughs> so if, only, the, the, if only yeah if only professor Le- uh was it level five would yeah level five yeah for this. <laughs> how many how many people how many companies have i shouted out so far <laughs> Yo, they should just all pay me money i know right if only <laughs> not that my reach is far or anything i know but, okay. i know i sit well, right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this reminds me of a puzzle where one of the puzzles was, hey, here is a flag. Here's a white flag. And you have, I think it was two or three different paint colors, right? Like mm-hmm. you have a red paint, a green paint, and there, and you separate the flag into three different rectangles or whatever. Mm-hmm. How many different colors can you, how many different flags can you make yeah, that's a... if you don't have two of the same colors next to each other? And yeah. so the trick was... The white part of the flag, which is unpainted, that counts as a color oh, itself. I see. And yeah. so I was over there like, all right, isn't it like three times three times three times? It's whatever, right? Because mm. it's so many different uh, combinations of it. The white plus the green plus the red. I and it. I never got to solve that puzzle. But is that the same sort of idea as this one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So oh, also see you later, Gamera. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks for popping in. Uh, yeah, so that is combinatorics at play, exactly, with the flags. Because okay. uh, combinatorics, without without going into detail, combinatorics is the math of how do you count things? How can you count the number of things, the number of things you can do? So the number of flags, how many flags could you make? That is combinatorics. And, yeah, uh, this I never is, got to figure that out. But yeah. <laughs> so you had the right idea where you, you're multiplying the numbers, right? The number of possible colors in each section, right? They might have had some weird rule about maybe the mirror image of the flag is the same flag or something like that. And so that might be why uh, it could have been tricky. And that comes into play in combinatorics as well. So now if we are here and we want to make six people for a committee, it's a similar idea where you need to multiply by the number of options. So to get, to get into the idea, so if I wanted to pick this committee, how many ways could I pick the first member? Or how many, what's, how many options do I have for the first member? For the first member? Yeah, you just, mean, wait. just right off the bat. If first I'm going to make this committee, I got my 10 <laughs> council, member, council members here. And I want to uh-huh. choose someone to be in the committee. How many, op- how many choices do I have for this first person have, in the committee? You have 10. 10, exactly. So we start with 10. Mm-hmm. Oh, then when you take that one person out, then you have nine more choices. Yeah, so for the next person, too. And when you take the next two, person out, you have eight more choices. Yep. And then six, and then five, and right? And that's our six-person committee. That's how many choices we would have for this committee. Sort almost. Right? But that, that so far, so good, right? Yeah. So that's... I'm not going to do the and math out, but ten times nine times eight times seven <clears throat> times six times five is the number oh, of ways... is that how you do it? Okay. Yes. You multiply them all together. You multiply it amongst themselves. Yeah. And that gives you the number of ways that you could pick six people from those ten. But there is one caveat here. That means that, for example, pretend I uh, this committee picked me and then you and then the four other people, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Now, imagine that we do the same process, but instead we pick you and then me and then the same four people. Mm-hmm. This would get it's counted differently. Order. It counts in a different order. It's just a different order. That's oh. the same committee, right? That's not a different committee. That's the yeah. same committee, but it would be counted it's separately because we because those options are counted separately when you pick me and then you versus you and then me. Those are counted separately when we were mm-hmm. picking at the beginning, right? Yes, the the order. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I just realized I'm on the wrong layer. Let's make another new layer. So, to account for that, you have to divide by some numbers. And the quantity you divide by in the end is uh, basically the number of ways you could rearrange them. So, you can imagine if I have... That's a lot. Yeah, so if I have my six people, how many ways can I, could I order them? Can I arrange them in what order, right? This actually is not mm. too complicated. Because how many ways, if I got six people, how many ways can I pick the first person to have in the order? How, or how many choices do I have for person number one in the committee of six if I've already picked my six people? If you already chose your six people, yeah. like for example, the number 10, if that was me, yeah. you would... 
Or so let's let's say that I've already picked my six people, okay? I I yeah. just have six people standing in front of me, and I want to figure out how many ways could I line them up in a different order. We arrange everyone. Yeah. So how many choices do I have for the person, the first person, the person on the far left? The person on the far left, mm -hmm. like let's say the number ten is me. How many choices we have where I'm in the far left? It would. Well, well maybe I, I would only be in the far left. Uh... I, many times, I guess, if you can switch all the other <laughs> yeah. numbers around. So I think the easier way to think about it is don't don't worry about who each person is. We uh -huh. have six people total in our group, right? Uh huh. So how many choices do I have for to to put on the far left? How many people, different people, could I pick for the far left? Six. Six. Yeah. Now, after I've put that person on the far left, how many people do I have to put second to the second from the left? Oh, also six. Well, I've already <laughs> put one person on the left, right? Right, for one of those mm -hmm. uh, combinations. Or, oh, I guess... I've already picked my person from so the far five left. five others. Yeah, five and then... And then four and three and two and one. Yep. Well, I guess. Yeah, exactly. One at the end. Yeah, the one at the end. It is, it is there. Mm -hmm. You are correct. There is a, sec a, a yeah. one at the okay. end. A secret not one. That it's it, always a secret Yeah, one. not that it matters because, you know, if you ignore it, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't change it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so that is the number of ways you can arrange the council. So you would divide by that. Is this what you? Is, is this? A, okay, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna I'm gonna finish that Professor Layton uh, puzzle with the flags later. <laughs> the on. The flags. It depends on the situation. I I can't. I don't know the exact puzzle, but this same idea might get you part of the way mm, if you think. Maybe. So in combinatorics, that is something you want to think about. Basically, is how many ways can I do this, and then what do I need to account for that is making things the same? Right. In this case, we need to divide because some of those rearranging them is the same council, even though the order is different. So for the flags, you might need to divide by how many ways you can arrange the flag, but have it be the same flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it might be yeah. something like that. Okay. There's a different caveat. Like, um, you can't have two of the same colors next to each oh, other. Oh, yeah. You cannot have, yeah, yeah. You can't have like red twice mm -hmm. and out of the three. So I guess it's a little bit different. Yeah. So there are other rules, but that's what combinatorics comes down to is just <laughs> how do you account for these different rules when you're counting? So, mm. Yep. Okay. And then B, I won't. I, I think I'm going to skip B for now. B says, you need to divide into three pairs. How many ways can you do that? And there's a similar process where you basically uh. pick people out and then you divide by the number of ways you can order those pairs. There's a lot okay. of different ways you could do it, but it ends up being a similar process. So, so is the dot? So is that ten times nine oh, times yeah, eight sorry. times seven times, six times five? Yeah. So for and most then math notation, the dots are multiplied. Yeah, and then divide by the bottom. Okay. Yeah, in, yeah. in math then, notation, you use a dot for okay. multiplication most of the time. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, I mean, I knew that, but I oh, didn't okay, know if okay. you were using that for this. Because at first, okay. we were just counting the numbers, right? So I thought you were like 10, uh, like, you know, 10 dash, 9 dash, right, or right. whatever. Yeah, those are yeah, those are dots. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's kind of, it's always kind of weird, though. I just know because a lot of people get confused by that. Because I do it out of habit, but then I realized, uh, you know, most people expect the X. Okay. Yeah, I guess at, when you get to like higher math or not higher, but like yeah. algebra, it's like that's true. Uh, I think X you're right. turns out to be the variable. So. Yeah, you're right. That's a that's a good point. That that is when they start switching it. You're that's a good point. <laughs> I couldn't remember when it gets switched. I just know that I've had people ask me what what the dot was. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. And let's just check number three now. Number three is kind of a cute thing. <clears throat> The uh, VTuber factory sends oh, yeah. out VTubers in batches <laughs> of exactly one thousand. <laughs> Yeah, so they make a thousand hey, VTubers at a time. You got to send them out uh -huh. exactly. And you're the one and responsible for making sure the batch is the right size. So you got to make sure that there's uh -huh. a thousand each, each group. But counting uh -huh. them is all is too much work. It's too much work to count them. So you, too many VTubers. Too many VTubers. <laughs> so what you do is you tell them, you say, hey, everyone, get into groups of nine. And then you see how many people are left over. And then uh -huh. you do it again for 11 and for 13. Okay. So this is actually getting at a, a something which is interesting, like, first of all, it's interesting to realize that this actually will tell you exactly how many there are to a degree. <laughs> the degree here being, I think you have to be within 1,200 and something, I can't remember exactly what, 1,287. So anything less than 1,287, those set of leftovers, however many leftovers you have at each point, will tell you exactly how many VTubers you have. So that's something called the Chinese remainder theorem, which is very interesting. Hmm. 
But uh, first part, what remainders do you expect at each step? So I think this is, you might be able to do this. I mean, it's kind of a pain to do, but do you under, what oh, is- Oh, is it a pain to do? Well, it's a pain if you do it by I, hand, rather. Okay, yeah. I thought, okay, my, I thought this was actually gonna, I, I'm just like briefly thinking, like mm -hmm. this is just division. It is. It's, like yeah. if you divide 11 into a thousand, yep. and then you figure out how many times 11 can go, and then a remainder, right? Isn't yep. it simple? Yeah, it's, it's very simple. I just mean that doing it by hand is annoying. I would just oh, plug okay. it into a calculator. I, <laughs> I was like, oh, you just, I, no, I, no, I, yeah. I was going to say, don't you just divide it? And you then do. you're like, it's going to, before I said that, you were like, it's going to be a pain. And I'm like, oh no, okay, I guess I'm wrong. No, no, no you're exactly right. A pain, I just okay. meant I didn't want to do it by hand. <laughs> Oh, okay, I would have done it by hand. Yeah. yeah I mean, no, I, I, well, the first one's easy. <laughs> if you divide them into groups of nine, what's the remainder there? Uh -huh. uh, nine can go into 1,000 uh, once, twice, three times, 900, wait, 90 times? I'm, I'm not good with you don't, that. You don't need to tell me exactly how many times it goes into, but what's the okay. what's the biggest multiple of nine that's less than 1,000, you think? <laughs> the biggest multiple of nine is less than 900? Uh, close, yeah. So nine hundred. <laughs> That's a good Is guess. It 900? Well, okay, but now what if I, I what if I told you, what if I added another nine? That's still less than it, right? You added another nine to get to nine hundred. Nine hundred and nine. Oh, right. That's nine. still less than nine. Uh, less than a thousand. Oh, isn't with nine? Isn't it whenever you multi whenever you was it multiply or you add the numbers within the things? Was add was the that digits? Time it were? will add up to nine. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that is true. Here's an easy one. So 1,000... 9 I'll, plus 9 plus... Is it 999? Yeah, there you go. 999, right? Because that's divisible okay. by 9. Because <laughs> yeah. each one is divisible by 9. 111 times. Yes, exactly. Or something. I, I'm just guessing. Yeah, so what's the <laughs> remainder then if you've got them if you've got them all in groups and that adds up to 999? 1. Yeah, the remainder is 1. Yep. So for 9, it's just going to be So I just got to get 9 groups. I'm like, all right, guys, I ain't going to count all 1,000 of you guys. Can you just get nine groups of... Or oh, groups wait, of nine. Yeah, into groups nine. of nine. Into groups of nine. And then if you see get one left over, nine. you go, good, check, perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay, so the same. it's the same process for 11 mm. and 13. You just divide and find the remainder, and I'll just tell you what they are. The remainder so is... So it'll be 111 groups with nine in each group. Yes, and, then one and left one over. left over, yeah. Yeah, that'll be me counting them all. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> right. the you're, you're the last one to be sent out, all right? <laughs> yep. Um, so now the remainder, if you're in groups of 11, the remainder will be 10. And if you're in groups of 13, the mm -hmm. remainder will be 12. Uh, oops, mod 11 is 10. So in case you're wondering, that's what it is. And now final, pro final part is... Uh, some of the VTubers went missing. Uh-oh. Oh, no. You don't know how many, but you did your check. You did your process, and you tried to check it. So when making groups of nine, you had a remainder of four. So you already know that something went wrong, right? <laughs> something went wrong. What happened? Yeah. And when making groups of There's 11, group. you have a remainder of six. Uh -huh. And when making groups of 13, you had a remainder of 10. How many VTubers are missing? Many VTubers are missing. From, like, each, well, each group? Well, just oh, total, wait, from to total. From the right. whole thousand batch. Well, if we made... Groups of nine, and we had a remainder of four. There should have just been a remainder of one. Yeah. Where there's four, that means one of the groups of nine lost uh, five VTubers. Yeah, I think what you would end up at but is six left. Is you're missing six? Yeah, because by that of measure. The, uh, the extra one. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it'd have been six total. That so there's six that were missing, and the four. Because the five plus the four would have meant would have been that one other nine group and then the one at the end. So six six missing. Right. Good. Good. That's that's the right exactly right line of thinking. Uh, uh -huh. But now here's the problem. What? What if you were <laughs> yes. what if you were missing a whole extra group of nine? Oh, and I. You wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Because you're not counting the groups, right? You're just. Yeah, I'm not counting that there's 111 groups. Exactly. Or or 110 or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So you don't. Hmm. So it could be. It could. <clears throat> six is. Six is exactly right as one of the possibilities for how many you're missing. Okay. But it could also be 15, right? Uh, for example. Yeah. So I would have to look at the other. Groups yeah. You have to use the other ones me. also. Okay. How about you know what? For those who are lost, like. 
you guys, we're in one building. If you guys ran away, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, the VTuber Bro, factory is not that complicated. Come on. <laughs> We've all been through yeah, come it. come on. <laughs> we all came Yo, fresh from rogue. there. That's on you. Yeah. I told you, nine group, or uh, nine in one group. <laughs> yep. Y'all disappeared. Yeah. I, I ain't getting paid, paid enough to chase down VTubers. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so you, your your intuition here is right, and I will say, uh -huh. so the way you end up doing this, I mean, there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of there's a lot of algorithms that can do this, and a computer actually can figure this out easily, but yeah. the easiest way, as I can, everything, right, the easiest way I've found, I think, to do something like this, we start with the biggest number, 13, groups of 13, so mm -hmm. by that, remainder of right, it should, it's a, it should be a remainder of 12, but we had a remainder of 10, Right? So it's supposed mm -hmm. to be a remainder well, of 12. I mean, I didn't figure out the nine. I didn't figure out the 13 one yet. But it's, okay, so there should have been 12. It should have been 12. But there's 10 instead. Yeah. Okay. So we know that we're missing... Uh, <laughs> that tells us that we're missing, um, I think... What is it? Six? Uh, or... <laughs> there should have been tw a remainder of 12... Uh, we have a remainder of 10 instead of 12, and that's out of 13. Well, okay. I mean, immediately it means you're missing at least two, right? What is it? Wait, what is it? What am I supposed to have? 12 and I'm at 10? So I should have 12 left over, but I have 10 left over, so I'm immediately missing at least er, two, right? Because those two of the leftovers are missing. Yeah, the least amount is two. And then it could be two, but then also it could be two plus an extra group of 13 or any number mm -hmm. of groups of 13. So, so it'd be like two, two X. or <laughs> very, just out of variable. The way we would write it is two plus 13 X or N, right? For some mm -hmm. number of N, which, so in other words, it's like two or 15 or uh, uh, 28 or so on, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, okay, here's a nice intuitive way to actually get the answer pretty quickly. W with nine, we said we're missing either, uh, we're missing six plus nine N. So we're either missing six or 15 or, uh, 20, what would this be? 24 or so on. So you can already kind of see where this is headed, right? What, where is, where would these, what's a possible number that matches for both of them? Wait, is that two plus 13 N? Yeah, plus 13N. That's for groups of 13. 13 times something. Okay. And then two... Wait, two, 15. So these are the possible numbers of missing from the groups of 13. Mm hmm And here's the possible numbers missing from the groups of 9. Oh, plus more... Okay. Yeah, it keeps going. <laughs> you add the 9 to it? Yeah, you keep adding 9. You st we were missing 6, okay. or maybe an extra group of 9, or another group of 9, and so on. Would you, like, find, uh, what is it, the, like, the least common Yeah, well, denominator? this is kind of a hint that we see immediately is, we'll notice, actually, 15 is possible for both of them, right? Oh, okay. So that kind of gives you an idea. Now, this is not, this doesn't tell you for sure that this is the answer, but this kind of gets you at uh -huh. the right idea. And you'll notice for 11, we, we'll see the same thing. In 11, we should have had 10, uh -huh. but we had 6. So that tells us we're missing 4 plus 11n. So that's 4, or 15, or 26, 37. Mm. So and we get the we least 15. common answers. Yeah, I it's guess. just, just it's just, uh, the answers in common are what they could possibly be. The problem is, so if you were to write this all out, actually, 15 is the only number that shows up until you get to, like, 1,000. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's <laughs> so a lot. you know for sure that it has to be 15. Now, there's another yeah. process that you can do this by in the other way which is using, which is you basically multiply them together and you end up doing this sequential process and you know that it, and you end up getting that there has to be 985 left over or 985 plus an extra thousand and something. But 985 means we're missing 15, right? Mm -hmm. From a thousand. So that's, that's our answer there. <laughs> I, the, the process is kind of long, but this is kind of the neat way that you can see it pretty easily if you know they're missing. 
is by doing mm-hmm. this and you see oh well this is the only one that works for all of the all of the remainders I feel like I may have learned this before <laughs> maybe it's for possible like one lesson or something one it chapter, is kind of a neat know. idea <clears throat> But uh, yeah, like when you said sequential something, I'm like, I I think I remember learning about seeing sequential somethings before. <laughs> yeah, I think sequences are. I think you might have learned about sequences, yeah, because they do come up uh, at various points. It is useful to be able to work with them. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's the those are the problems. Any uh, any questions or thoughts <laughs> as we wrap it up here? No questions, but I do want to do more of these, although I feel like for the word problems, I may, like, I can, I can try to guess how to do it, but mm. I don't think I'll be able to properly <laughs> answer them. No, yeah, I, um, I can make, I, now that I sort of have a better idea of the topics that you're familiar with and that you enjoy, I can definitely. <laughs> you mean my math level, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can make them uh, in a way that is maybe more approachable. <laughs> yeah, like algebra level. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> or, and in ways, yeah. Do... I may have done some uh, calculus or whatever in college, but I do not remember it. Yeah, yeah. Completely understandable. I only remember it because I had to teach it repeatedly. (laughs) So so it kind of got ingrained in me. (laughs) Sequences. Oh, but yeah, the question... Yeah, the question... uh, Let's see. I... Yeah, I would like to do something like this again. Whether it's word problems or the the actual math math Mm -hmm. problems. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it could be fun. (laughs) Maybe I'll also... I was thinking, now that we've done this... Maybe I'll post the the actual problem set on on Twitter mm-hmm. in case anyone else wants yeah. to try it without looking at the answers Yo, here. <laughs> you'll make it a trend. Have yeah. people attempt to, that to would do be, it. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> go for it. That'd be great. Yeah, I'll post it and I'll see if maybe if anyone wants to go for it. I'll just post it. I don't really expect anyone to do it, but if anyone does and wants to send it to me, then I'd be happy to to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, like, how often do you see math problems about VTubers? I've never. That's true. Ex- yeah, maybe I should just, I'll just post <laughs> post these, or I'll post both of the pages or whatever, but this is maybe the one that I'll point out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Like, um, when mm-hmm. I had, so, like, when I did my stream, I was, so, I, maybe it's because, you know, I, I was struggling, but, like, I had my viewers, like, help me. They were posting math formulas in the chat, and they were, <laughs> like, they were so engaging with uh, helping me out, and I was... And I, even with the math formulas, I was kind of like, uh, so yeah. some of them, I didn't understand it. So for some of them, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that makes that, that I remember that formula and I'll try yep. to plug in things. The best so part it was, is, it was fun. is if they, if, if they're saying things and, and, and it just like, it's, <laughs> you're going to get like one guide by the, the one person who's going to say something that does, is completely wrong, but you're like, oh yeah, that, that looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. I, I put it in and I'm like, yes, this is the answer. I circled it or boxed <laughs> yeah. it or whatever. Stamped it. I'm good. Ship this ship this out. I'm good. Yeah. The, it's the, completely wrong. Right. The person's like, like just shouting out a completely unrelated formula. But you're like, yeah, that looks I right. I wouldn't know. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I wouldn't know. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good work. Good work. Honestly, yeah. That could yeah, be you... your thing. <laughs> just have like a guest street collab streamers. Right, yeah. Streamers with people doing their math. work. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. It's, it's fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, nice. uh, Thank you for making this. Thank you for typing all of this out. Like, yep. I think it was several months ago. I think it took me a It was a while ago, but. It's... The program or the, the questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad. Thanks for uh, doing them. Thanks for. Uh, Hanging out with me while I talked about it, while I rambled about math forever. <laughs> yeah, same. Yo, that that's that sobered me up. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, math. Quite a sobering subject indeed. <laughs> I don't know how many of you were in my uh, previous stream. Yeah, I was. Um, I say previous, but I was streaming earlier. Uh, for two and a half hours, or was it two and a, I don't know. I think I, I think it was about two Math hours. Of, oh yeah, I'm glad. I was just, hear, hear I was just drinking. That. Yeah, ma- yo, math is. I mean, I haven't done it in a long time, but it's refreshing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Yoko was on her stream was uh having a grand old time. I was having a grand. Old, so for two hours, I was just talking with my uh, my. Uh, I was talking with the chat, and I was drinking um soju and and some <laughs> yeah. other stuff when i ran out of it because i forgot we to were, put okay a, wait yeah uh-huh keep going i'll, I'll, I'll finish okay. after yeah okay i forgot to put a uh 
hydrate, redeem. <laughs> um, what's what's the word? A limit? Like a yeah, so, like a cooldown or something. A cooldown. I forgot to put a cooldown. I was going to, and I got like fifteen or twenty-one hydrate redeems. And I'm like, um. <laughs> See, this is <laughs> what I was gonna say. <laughs> You're using yeah. the hydrate redeem as a drink, as a drink alcohol <laughs> redeem. I, like, I use it. <laughs> Isn't that like the opposite of hydrating? <laughs> I, yeah, I think someone said that in my gym, in my uh, in my stream. They're like, "This is like dehydrating." Yeah, I know. Cause you, I re I noticed at one point you're like, "Oh, I've got 20 hydrates. Gotta get more alcohol." I'm like, "Wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. I'm like, I, that seems this, this seems like not, not the intended purpose of a hydrate regime." <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes the chat's just like wait no water please yeah no more alcohol i guess that's a way to do it where uh you won't get n no one will it's like the, when you for youtube you have to like you have to pretend you're not drinking you're like oh non-alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's right they're, they're kind of strict on youtube yeah the content right? guidelines they allow you yeah i think they don't allow you to like drunk game or drunk stream yeah i think you get or at least you can't drunk. you don't get you can't monetize it at least i think oh okay something like that i think it was maybe the people with you can be drunk but you yourself oh, really? that's gaming and uh, yeah i don't i forgot what it was but i don't know yeah there's a lot of weird I usually do rules it is... oh yeah with youtube yeah I just stick with i just stick with um twitch what do you call it Twitch for now. Yeah, yeah. I've only. Been I would using like Twitch. to post my vods to YouTube, but now that you bring up the whole drunk thing, it's like, uh. I mean, I, again, I don't think you'll get in trouble. <laughs> I think it's just that they might I won't be not. Able to monetize they might. They it. might block ads on it or something. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's fine. Which I mean, that's how I they mean, demonetize. That's demonetizing is just not allowing right. ads. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not having ads on a video is great. Well, I, I mean, I won't make money from it, but I don't really, that doesn't really bother me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Same here. Yeah. I, I mean, get it there. yeah, exactly. I, cause I post all of my, <laughs> I mean, since the, for the past year or so, I've posted all my VODs on YouTube just to have them there. <laughs> I need to get back to posting content on YouTube. I used to make my own videos. Yeah. And I then, remember. Yeah. And then I was like, this is a lot of work. It's so, and then so I much work. Streaming. It is so much Streaming work. is so much easier because you just do it. Yeah, you, you don't, just, don't think you know, about it. Yeah. You don't I need know. to go back and cut and edit I and know. add music and add images and make sure the time, make sure there's no gaps in between the two videos right? that you cut and put together and everything. Oh my goodness. I want <laughs> to sure do. Make sure it's entertaining. I want to do that. more edited content on YouTube because I feel like it'd be good and there's a lot of things I want to do, but it's just like, it takes so much. I just don't have the time to edit it. It's like, yeah, I have to like it, edit it, it all together. Power. Or especially like mm -hmm. I wanting to edit down the uh, like a vods of right like a, like say uh -huh. of like my Nuzlocke run or something right. Yeah. But it's just like it. T I did like part of an episode. It took me forever to edit <laughs> down, and I was like, "This is not sustainable." <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I've been doing is after I'm done, like maybe you know a few days or whatever after I'm done with a, I, I post up a vod. Mm -hmm. I'll go back and I'll you know I'll slowly watch through a vod. And I would just get like highlights or clips Time stamps, from it. I know. I then, need to do that. <laughs> yeah, and I would either say like I'll pick out the good parts. Yeah. Because you know Twitch, it's easy to do it on Twitch. Just pick it out. You can either post it directly onto your Twitch or for me, I I post it on my uh, Discord. Mm -hmm. So I have like copies of it, I guess, and I also download it if I need to, right? Yeah. Um, because once you save it to Twitch, you can download it like whenever from there. Yeah. Well, um, actually, and then I you can also take those and I have all of my vods. I, all of my vods go. I, I store on my computer. Oh yeah, I do that too. Like okay. I'll I'll download the entire vod of like three four hours or whatever. But, oh, but um, I don't even directly from Twitch. I'll pick out like clips. Yeah, and highlights. that makes sense. Yeah, I well, I my I have OBS set to just record just to record automatically. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it just saves it. I don't have to download, thankfully, because it's kind of... That's the oh, thing, okay. it's like annoying to have to download. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So I have I all like terabytes my... of my VODs, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to say, I um I don't have my OBS to... Well, I, I use Streamlabs, but I don't have it to, like, mm. automatically download. I don't think my computer can handle yeah. downloading the VOD, at well, the, like, recording the VOD at the yeah. same time as streaming, at the same time as running a game or whatever. Recording is Pretty a little bit of though. extra, although I don't think... The, the recording, I think, doesn't take too much extra processing. Because it's... I, th mm. I think it's not too intensive. I don't know for sure, though, so... <laughs> Did you see earlier? I was playing Age of Empires yeah, two, and I saw yeah. my my model was like three frames per second. Yeah, it or was something. kind of uh, <laughs> it was it was uh, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I mean, chugging along at certain points, bit. it was fine. It's just is there were certain points where it was like yeah, like 
it was very stop motion -y. <laughs> stop. yeah <laughs> Was, uh... Yeah, and then I, I lean down to touch my computer. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's toasty. <laughs> but pretty soon. Pretty soon I'll get better. I mean, I have most of my computer parts for my new uh, build. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm just i just waiting for one or two more. Yeah. Then no more toasty PC. Hopefully. Yeah, it'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. You see. But, uh, okay, so with that, though, I think maybe we'll wrap up <laughs> the stream at least. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we'll just go on for hours. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say because always we'll just keep talking about random conversations about about yeah. about uh, Twitch and stream logistics. <laughs> it's like okay, that's we can we can do that off stream. <laughs> yes, true. But, but uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining in. Yeah, thanks everyone for hanging out. Thanks Ryoko for mm -hmm. working on these math problems and for hanging out with me while we, I talked about them. Um, yeah, of course. I I enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for making the questions too. I'm yeah. looking forward to more. Of course, yeah, I'll have to get on that. <laughs> but yeah, like, for... I like I I don't know if I mentioned it earlier in the stream or it was it in my own stream, but mm -hmm. I never imagined as an adult that I would ask someone to make math, <laughs> make math homework for, for you, me yeah. so I could do them for fun while streaming it to like the world. <laughs> I know it's kind of a weird idea, weird situation. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so never for anyone, <laughs> anyone here who is. Uh, a follower of me you know you go give yoko go check out yoko she she does streams oh, it's fun and anyone here who's coming from yoko's stream you know hey she give me a follow i don't actually do this that often maybe i'll do it more it could be fun but you know i also do a lot of games just very relaxed mostly indie games nintendo so anyone who's coming from there i uh you know if you if you're interested in hanging out sometime feel free to follow but uh, yeah, so he has chill, chill, relaxed streams. Was so it Monday, <laughs> Wednesday, Friday, uh, Japan Standard Time? Yeah, yeah, seven seven p.m. Japan time. So the same time as this one started, but yeah, Monday, Wednesday, my time, yeah. which is like early morning Monday, Wednesday, Friday for a lot of the other like worlds. <laughs> yeah. a lot of the other world. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even in Europe, I think it's like morning <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning. Yeah I, think, yeah, I think it's morning for them too. Yeah. Also, like stateside. Yep. Early, early morning. But yeah, so. Uh, yeah, and if you want notifications when I go live for any of that stuff, you can find that on Twitter, Camillion T. Uh, you can take a link down below. And as I mentioned, my VODs are archived on YouTube, so you can check that out there if you want more content. It's mostly games. I have them all playlisted and everything, so it's all over there. Yeah, Ryoko, do you have any socials you want to plug? The socials? Um, Twitter, I'd probably. Be on Twitter yeah. and YouTube and uh, Twitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, That's the go. three that I, I haven't, like, made stuff on YouTube that much. But you can find me, Ryoko Mizuno, on uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then my, you know, my, my, uh, hold on. Let me, let me just post something in the chat real quick. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I meant. There we go. There we go. Click on my name. My okay. name is there now. You can click the it there chat. and all the links <laughs> will be there. Yeah. I just self-shout out myself. Right. That's what I, yeah, I don't, I don't have commands because I don't have my bots set up, so. Me either. <laughs> you gotta do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I just manually type them out. Right, exactly. Or me if, too. Yeah, or if like I think Camomilian earlier, you may have typed something, and I'm like, that's the person. Yeah, you did. You were just like, oh yeah, yeah, that that one. Go click whatever. that. Yeah. Get that guy right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think we will wrap up the stream there. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day, rest of your morning and evening, and uh, yeah. Until next time. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.